give the uh, invocation Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone that would, please bow your head. Father God, your word says to give honor where honor is due. So that's what we'll do and take some time today just for that purpose. Thank you for the men and the women serving and fighting for the cause and sake of the United States and freedom of strangers around the world. For those serving now and from the past and certainly those that gave their lives, we thank you for all individual lives in law enforcement and every other public servant that risk everything to protect us and to keep us safe. Help us to make you proud and gain as much favor as possible with our fellow man and all those that we represent. In Christ's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And speaking of the Pledge of Allegiance, if I could take a moment as chairman just to commend, recognize the uh, students at York High School and their parents that stood up for the American flag. Um, in this day and time with everything going on in Washington and attorney generals that appear to be against the Constitution and when now we have a general that's being talked about being court-martialed because he talked about his Christian faith guiding him into the military. Uh, we got a lot of concerns right now in this country, so, so to see the students and parents stand up the way they did, they should be commended. Makes us feel like we have a future. First order of business is oath of office. If I call your name, would you come forward? Uh, Jim White, William Mitchell, Holly Parrish. The uh, county manager would like for me to recognize the fact that the county received the uh, Circle of Honor Award from United Way for our commitment to what they stand for, so I wanted to mention that. Are you happy now? I am. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Staff did good. <laughs> okay, our first order of appearance is Gary, are you here? I didn't see you. Oh, there you are. You're hiding back there behind somebody. Uh, Gary's retiring from York County, so if I could give him a plaque. <laughs> You've been here long enough for a plaque, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> About 30 years, right? 29. 29. I hate to lose you. I know private uh, business sometimes make a, a, makes a flattering offer that we can't compete with, but you've been a great asset to York County, so thanks for everything you've done. Thank you. I would just like to... Uh, I can't stand in front of a microphone and not talk, but um, <laughs> I'd like to just thank the citizens of York County for giving me the opportunity to serve them for 29 years. Um, it's been a wonderful career and it's presented me with the opportunity to go on and do something else, but citizens of York County are lucky to have a staff like they have in York County that cares for the citizens, and I've been honored to serve them. 
Thank you. Thanks, Gary. We appreciate everything. <laughs> we'll have uh, Cummings come forward and talk about the building projects. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell, members of council. We appreciate, again, the opportunity to uh, present to you our construction <coughs> update for April. Um, we'll start with the fire training center. Uh, once again, we had a wet month of, of <laughs> April. Um, the contractor requested about 14 days. Um, we were able to negotiate that down to about seven days in terms of weather days. Um, but as you know, the last couple weeks have been really good. So they've made tremendous progress. This, this photo was from the end of April when the site was still uh, really wet. But we've made, we've made a lot of progress. Um, as of now, the uh, shop building, if you see immediately to the left of the admin building, that uh, structure is standing and they're beginning the wall panels on it. We also um, have the vehicle storage building structure standing. Um, this is the admin from about a week ago. Now all the masonry is, is done on the exterior. A little bit here and there, they'll have to be finished up, but, but the majority of it is now finished. Um, we're working inside, continuing to frame walls and rough in inside the building. Um, this is the shop building that's now standing, and, and actually there's, there's some wall panels on that building now. Um, this is the burn building. The masonry is up to about eight feet there. Um, we have a change that, that we're addressing, adding a few windows to that building. So we've kind of went from there and moved over to the training tower, and we have masonry up on the training tower to about the same height. Any questions, Fire Training Center? Is it on budget? Yes, we, we do have some budget concerns because of some recent changes that we have. We're, we're probably have about $60,000 in contingency uh, left to get to the end. I think is, you know, as long as we don't hit anything major between now and then, we, we should be okay. Who wanted the changes? One of them was a structural change that we had to make. Um, there was a mistake. Um, during the design process of, of calculating the structure on the training tower. So we had to beef up some slabs and that was a big hit. It was about $53,000. Um, it'll actually show up on next month's report where we, where we tally what's been charged as a contingency. Had an architect or engineer mistake? Yes, sir. We talked to them about we have. out with our open? We have and they are. Thank you. Mr. Rod? When I saw the overview shot, um, how many acres is this thing sitting on? I think we're disturbing about 15 acres. I believe your site's in the 50 acre neighborhood, if I'm not mistaken, but we're only disturbing about 15. How's the timeline going? Timeline's looking really good. I think, it, particularly if we can maintain the kind of weather we've been having and then an occasional like rain, I, I think we'll be in really good shape um, as we, I, I, I hesitate to say it because of the weather that we have, but we, we should improve on the schedule if, if the weather holds out. So, yes, sir, Mr. Anderson. Yes, sir. So, so maybe before December first. Yes, sir. That I, I think there's potential for that to happen. I don't want to commit to it at this point, but the, but the potential is certainly there with the progress that, that we're making. Okay. okay at the courthouse, um, we've the demolition, as you know, is underway. We've um, we're pretty much through. We, we've done all the work in the attic, the fourth floor, the third floor. We're wrapping up the second floor now and they're moving down to the first floor where the bulk of the, the heavy demolition is in terms of piping and units and electrical and that sort of thing. So they'll be in there for a couple weeks. We did hit a little bit of asbestos um, on the second floor behind some ceilings that uh, we're now going to have to remove and abate. Um, I thought we had abated all the asbestos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what so, everyone thought. These, these were concealed above some ceilings. Um, wow. When we got to taking the ceilings out, uh, we uncovered them. Um, so it, it's not a lot. It's mostly pipe insulation, about 150 linear feet. Um, so I we're, don't want to interrupt your flow, but when these abatement people come in, how did they miss it? I, I think with it being concealed behind a hard ceiling, they just didn't pick up on it that it was there. It would be my... Gut react. I don't know if there was at one point a lay-in ceiling there that maybe they they thought they had everything when they got everything above the lay-in ceiling, but this was up above a hard ceiling. It happened in McKelvey too, so next time as we go along, I'm sure y'all 
help us? Well, and again, we had contingencies right. built into this yeah. demolition contract. It's, you know, we had 25,000. That change was about 10,500. That was some other little minor oh, changes. I mean, that's a lot, but that's all they charged to get the rest? Mm -hmm. What, did they feel guilty or something? <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't, yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Uh, the work's progressing well. Um, the, the asbestos change maybe cost us about a week because we have to file our notice of abatement and that sort of thing uh, with the state. But um, I, you know, I think early June we'll be wrapping up the demolition phase, which is fine in the big, big picture. Um, I met with the architects last week to kind of look at their updated drawings to see where they were. I would say they're probably 75 to 80 percent complete with construction drawings. Um, the, the goal is to, com is to wrap those up next week. We're going to meet with administration towards the end of next week and kind of present it to them along with the city manager to start briefing them so that we can get the, the approval process underway. If anything, we're maybe a week behind on drawings. Um, I think uh, the city's kind of committed to working with us, though, as we get through the approval stage of those drawings. So I think I think in big picture wise, we're fine from a time standpoint. If I could just very quickly, I just I was asked to let the council know this morning by the mayor, a city council member and the city manager that they want to do whatever they can to help and mm -hmm. to try to move the process along. So um, if they don't, let me know. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the manager will be coming to some of these meetings. So I mean, they've been working with us. This is pretty much your updated schedule. And it, um, again, fire training center is on schedule. Um, if anything, we're maybe a week behind on the design portion of the courthouse, but I, I think we're gonna make that up during the approval stage. So um, no, no real concerns at this point in terms of schedule. There's no real change on the elevation, is it? No, sir. No, sir. Just really all interior mm -hmm. and the windows? Um, Yes, and the windows, there, there's a, a little bit of a secure entrance change on this elevation, if you're looking, but other than that, the, the elevation will be cleaned up and, and brought back to a new new appearance, but other than that, um, no change out there. You don't cut down that tree? We're going to do our best to protect the tree. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Ms. Miller? And Steve, I guess, is Steve with you? No. Okay. Good evening. For the record, Otter Miller, Planning Director. I'm here to give your monthly update on the comprehensive plan. Uh, we are on schedule. I know that's hard to read, but that's the important part. We are on schedule for delivering the product in uh, September. I uh, wanted to summarize what we've done since the last time I was here giving you an update. But first, I'd like to say, because it's not part of the presentation, the state of the county, which is the baseline report that the consultant was working on, is final. And it has been posted on the county's website. Uh, it is located on the planning webpage. If you go to York Forward, uh, click on that link, and go to the very bottom of the page, it's divided up, I think, into three separate documents, uh, one comprehensive document, but due to size. So that has all of the baseline information that was collected by the consultant for the comprehensive plan update. So that gives you baseline on uh, what's our current housing, what's our current economic situation, transportation network, and all of that. So I would encourage everyone to, to look at that. And if council would like us to send you a printed out copy or something like that, please just uh, convey that to the county manager and we'll get it to you. So, so we did have an open house on May 5th. Uh, this was at the Baxter Hood Center. What we were hoping to achieve at that uh, open house was to get some specific feedback on the four core areas that the advisory committee identified for us to focus on, which was economic development, parks and recreation, land use and transportation. So we were trying to get the community to give us specifics of what they would like to see. And for example, for Parks and Rec, we heard in the general meetings they wanted a Parks and Recreation Department. So we were asking them, well, what would you do or what would you request in order to achieve, achieve that goal? Uh, would you be willing to pay for it? Would you have user fees? Do you want parks in certain areas? So that was the purpose of that meeting. And so the consultant will uh, take in all of that feedback and use that for the next meeting. Uh, and, but before I move on to the, the next meeting, um, as part of that May 5th, 
meeting, we had something called the chip game. And if any of you have ever been through a comprehensive plan update, uh, old school was you laid out the maps and you gave everyone markers and you said, here, color what you want the property to look like in the future. If you want commercial, color it red. If you want residential, color it yellow. So we've got a little more high tech and it's called the chip game. And uh, it is still open. It is open until May 22nd so people can log on. And I put the website at the bottom of the presentation. And what you do is you just basically move the chips around. So if you want to see retail in a certain area of the county, you put your chip there. If you want transportation improvements in a certain area, you put your chip there. And the consultant will use this to do the land use scenarios as we move forward. So I really encourage everyone to get online and play the chip game to let us know what they think the future uh, look of the county should be. Let me ask you this. I can't tell them a black and white copy. Mm -hmm. What's just the, the three colors, red, purple, and green? What, what do they stand for? If I remember correctly, because there's different categories, I think the red is retail. I believe the purple is transportation, and green would be something to dealing with open space, hiking trails, uh, parks and rec, something like that. Okay. Natural resources. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I know, no surprise, up in the Fort Mill area, there's a lot of purple. Uh, our next big meeting is June 11th. This is an all-day event, and what uh, this meeting is hopefully going to achieve is we've had the broad picture now, like what are the general concepts of what people are looking for in the compre comprehensive plan. This meeting is to really sit down with them and work out the specifics. What goals, what objectives do you want to see in this update? What do you want to do to achieve uh, these requests that you are making? So uh, we will be talking about economic development, the transportation, uh, short and long-term solutions for parks and rec, and then utilities and stormwater management. Um, we have a proposed agenda for this. Uh, the location is still tentative, but as of now, we are trying to secure Oak Ridge Middle School. Um, our first choice we could not get. There was date conflict. So what we're going to do is divide the day up. So from 9.30 to 11, uh, the project team will work with the county staff. 11.45 to 1 p.m., um, we will do a lunchtime presentation for the council, the planning commission, and the advisory committee. And then 1 to 2.30, uh, we'll work with the advisory committee specifically. Then we'll meet with the stakeholders. And then 6 to 7.30 will be the community meeting. Um, and then moving forward, as always, it's important to keep getting the public input on everything. We are on schedule to complete the document, and uh, we are posting the documents on yorkforward.com. And like I said, I hope you play the chip game. I do have one question. What, what kind of um, participation are you seeing on the, on the website? We actually, um, not surprising, we see spikes after the meeting. Um, we did see a spike after the May 5th meeting. Um, we I tell you, we did not have the turnout that we were hoping for at that May 5th meeting, but we were heartened that there was um, traffic the next day on playing the chip game. So it does increase and then it levels off, and then we have a meeting and it increases again. So. What, what, how, how, many, how many folks are visiting this? <coughs> um, What's the ballpark? I, I can get you the, the number. I think the last time I checked it out, there was 1,000 a, a unique visitors to it. And uh, I know they say don't ask questions if you don't want to know the answer, but um, <laughs> did Western York County participate any more in the last meeting? Because we did. Uh, I know Paul sitting out there with the chamber, they sent out an email blast to all the businesses and that kind of thing. I just wondered if it helped. I, not that I know, I'm aware of. No, we actually did um, get more people from the Rock, Rock Hill area, and that is, we think, attributed to the fact that it's at the Baxter Hood Center. That is a great location for meetings, not the best location to try and get the participation because people just perceive that it's too far from their area. So that's why we're trying to move the meetings around. The, um, the slide authority did have more than the time from 9.30 to 11. Did it have... Uh, Oops. Oops. What did they turn? Uh, and the email, it's got 9.30 to 11, but I heard you mention, okay, good. You mentioned a bunch of other stuff that's not on here. 7.45 to 1, all right? That's what I wanted to know. And then 1 to 2.30. Okay. Yeah, that's Looks like a long day for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that listed in priority? Yeah. Priority recommendations? Is it? Like the first one's number one, or is that just by? No, no, we want the priority recommendations for those categories, so. Okay. 
Those were des designated by you or by the, the advisory group? The advisory group. This was, as, um, as, we, as I said last time, um, we wanted to, the decision was made by the advisory group. Did you want to focus a little bit on a lot of things or focus a lot on a few things? And the phrase is, do you want to boil the ocean or do something smaller? And they chose to do something smaller and focus on those four topics. Are pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a pretty big hashtag too. Roll the ocean. All right. That it? All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next group would be Keep York County Beautiful. Hey, how are y'all doing? My name is Matt Hurd. I'm speaking on behalf of Keep Your County Beautiful. Just wanted to point out this is our fifth anniversary. We had certification in 2010, and we have a large contingent of people here, so it's a very active board. Um, if you look up in the top left corner here, we've got a new logo. It's on these lovely blue shirts, and if you want to see the old one, if you don't remember it, it's on the green ones right over there. <laughs> we've got members from all districts, from at large as well, so it's a very active board. We've got so far to date, and this will actually increase a little bit, about 600 volunteer hours, which is in service value of about $13,800. And this has come from a variety of activities, including some of the environmental education liaisons we do, Adopt a County Road, you can read most of these things, Litter Challenge, America Recycles Day, Earth Day Birthday, but again, this is a very active board that provides a lot of services to the county. One of the things that's important to point out is that the, the group itself has also been recognized in a variety of ways. So we have a number of grants that have been awarded, a number of actual awards that have been given out. So the affiliate itself, we got the Keep uh, America Beautiful President Circle Award. And then we have a few individual members that got awards as well. Leslie Hatchell got one from the South Carolina Litter Control. Gary Ferris got one from the South Carolina Litter Control Association. Same with Allison Woodruff. And we also had a Keep South Carolina Beautiful Gold Level Affiliate recognition. So this is in honor of work that we've done. We also got two grants that we received from the Community Pride Association. This is from Palmetto Pride. And Keep South Carolina Beautiful gave us a grant for $8,000 as well. So just to point out, we do a lot of work with a lot of different people. This includes state agencies, local agencies. You can see the list of people here. Private universities who worked with Winthrop, uh, Palmetto Pride, Cultural Museum for York County. So a lot of valuable people. And we have a few basic objectives, including protecting our landscapes and waterways. And one of the main ways we do this is through waste reduction and recycling. We have programs such as on-the-go recycling bin loan outs that we do. We also do lots of litter education and prevention projects like the Litter Challenge and Marine Debris Education. We also do partnerships with the Sheriff's Office on code enforcement. And finally, we talk about beautification. We do this by enhancing environmental literacy and trying to work to familiarize different groups of people with what they can do to help out your county. So some of these things include events like America Recycles Day. This guy in the middle who looks probably pretty silly to y'all, his name is Dr. T, but kids love him. And this is an event from America Recycles Day. He does a lot of work to talk about <coughs> recycling. And these are great programs that we put on. And one of the important things to get is we hit about five to 6,000 people a year with these kinds of events. We've got lots of other programs. On the left here, you've got Great American Cleanup. This is one individual family that actually picked up all this litter. We have free supplies for anybody who has a desire to go out and pick up. We do events across the county, like the York County Green Business Conference, which we had at Winthrop University in March. And on the right here, this is the Earth Day birthday, which is at the Ann Springs Greenway. The important thing, too, for people who want to get involved, we've got social media that we get involved with. So this is actually an individual from the board, uh, Gary Ferris, who's on the left here. This is all the waste he picked up. We've got a Facebook page, an Instagram account, Twitter. We keep active, and we try and have people involved. Uh, we also do have a grant program that we give out grants for. And so we have an adopt a gateway garden. So we give out people, give out grants to agencies and groups that want to adopt a garden. We also have a very successful mini grant program. You can see some of the recipients of these grants. They've been in varying amounts, but Museum of York County is putting in a butterfly garden. We've got some work that's been done at Saluda Trails Middle School. We've got other things that are happening in a lot of places around York County. So this has been a very successful venture and we like to give out funds to help out people to do beautification projects here. 
And I'm going to walk you through this confusing graph because nobody likes to look at a graph like this most <laughs> of the time. But uh, what we've got is the York County Litter Index. If you look at the top, there's four scores. So you've got one is good. That represents minimal or no litter. Two is a slightly littered area. Three represents a little bit littered. And four is bad. Okay. So what we've got on the bottom here, you see York, Fort Mill, Clover, and Rock Hill. These are four area districts where we have school districts and what we do is we pick a random subset of roads and we have people who go around and what they do is they actually have a driver a navigator and four scores and they go around and they look at these roads and they see how polluted they are or littered they are if you look on the left here you see 2010 through 2013 you see that that average score is going down that was for the roads that we looked at for those four years okay so you see in general we're seeing an improvement here we just started a new set of roads in 2014 so that's why the average is a little bit lower but we're hoping to see that same trend that we're going to see this go down that we're going to see an increase in or a decrease in litter so just to close out here so this is positive news just to close out, we have uh, hashtags that we encourage people to use just to get the word out about South Carolina. Our motto is love where you live and not in my yard, which is sort of a, to help people think, hey, you can do your part to clean up, okay? So thank you, and we'd be happy to take any questions. Questions? Thank you, sir. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the public hearing. Nobody signed up for the public forum. Uh, first public hearing is rezoning act. Well, was this which one was deferred? No, it's, it's, it's old uh, business anyway. Old business. Hearing. Okay. Uh, rezoning action. Consider first reading and public hearing of case number fifteen oh nine. Rezone property from RUD to RC one with conditions at four fifty seven Highway two seventy four in the Lake Wiley community. Anybody here want to speak in favor? Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, the applicant has requested a deferral on this. And okay, requested it last week, and staff is, is supportive of that. This has been uh, re-advertised for June 1 for uh, that date for the public hearing. Okay, so do we, we take a motion on deferral? Need a motion for deferral. I'll take it. I'll, I'll go with that. Motion to, to deferral. Yeah. All right. Motion to close. Second. Motion to close. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Now the new motion. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to, do, to defer this until June 1st or a stated date. We have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All righty. Next item. Hold a public hearing and consider second reading of an ordinance authorizing a lease to renew our community of a portion of county property located at White Street and Oakland Avenue and containing approximately 4.43 acres of the former good automotive property, including the former showroom and body shop, to provide for a public hearing and to pro provide for other matters related thereto. Anybody? Oh, oh, yes, yeah, public hearing. Yeah, Anybody here want to speak in favor? I should have asked for no's first. Of uh, 2415 Fern Cliff Road, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, I will speak in favor of this. Uh, you all have been gracious enough to let us use this property uh, for a dollar a year uh, for the last five years. The lease is up. The heck you say. Uh, I beg your pardon? I, I said the heck you say. I'm just Yeah. <laughs> I think we actually did give the dollar most of the time. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, uh, and we're asking for basically the same thing, but it's really a 60 day, 60 day to 60 day lease is what it is. Uh, right. Because you can uh, tell us that you need the property for whatever reason and we'll be out and we won't say anything about it. But since, mm -hmm. since uh, we opened our doors uh, this coming October, it will be five years. Um, we have helped a lot of people this past year uh, that about 945 new people came to the downtown center that you allowed us to create. Uh, Rock does a lot more than just what happens on that particular piece of property. But on that particular piece of property, on the corner of Dave Lyle and White Street in the former Kia Motor Center, um, good motor company, in the showroom, we have a community intake center. Now, we hope that these are going to be in every community in, our, in, in York County. But right now, we started in Rock Hill because that's where we had a building. So if you have any other buildings and other places, we'll be happy to, to occupy them. 
Uh, but it's a community intake center where people who are in need, they don't know where to go. You don't know where to send them. The police pick them up. They get out of jail. They don't know where to go. Come to us. We're open six days a week, actually probably seven now uh, as of this past uh, month. But about seven days a week, um, but six days from 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock, we're open. And people can come there. We don't care what their problem is. You know, we're not in a medical facility. If they have a medical problem, go to the emergency room at Piedmont. But if they have a social emergency, come to the emergency room at um, 119 East White Street, called Rock Central. So uh, we triage folks there. We determine what their issues are. We shoot them out to the various agencies that are already out there. We're not trying to create anything new and get them the help that they need. If they don't have the transportation to get them there, we provide them rides to get them there. And we haven't charged anybody so far. But last year, we provided 2,700 and some odd rides last year in the seven vehicles that we have that our volunteers use to drive people to places. Also, to get people rides back and forth, we put about 240 people on bicycles last year. The body shop that's a part of this property uh, that we've been using. You ought to go in there and see it. If I, I'll, maybe someday I'll bring you a picture. But uh, we, again, you, see, you will see a lot of people downtown Rock Hill riding bicycles now that used to walk. And they don't, we don't just give them a bicycle. They have to come in and earn the bicycle. You know, they have to spend four or five hours working, learn how to put one of these together, learn how to fix the brakes, those kind of things. And if it breaks, then they can come back in and work on it. We're serious about that. We're going to start a program uh, probably this year about cars, a donation of cars. You know, I'm all for the Salvation Army, but when you give a car to the Salvation Army, they send it to an auction somewhere else, and they just convert it to money. I want the doggone cars so that we can put them in the hands of people that need vehicles and keep them in York County. I mean, that this, this is what Rock is about. This is where we live. This is our community, and this is our community's responsibility. So you took a chance on us, let us use that property, and uh, we've kept it in good repair. We really haven't had that many complaints that I know of on the property. Uh, we're using it for really good things. Uh, and uh, so there are other things outside the property. I just want to hit on it real quick because that central thing with the bikes and those things uh, helped out. But this past year, Rock also uh, took the lead in the community to help with a couple of things. One, when the executive inn was shut down, it was condemned. The city gave the people who were there, some people lived there for 14 years. The city gave them eight days to get out and all their stuff. Well, we, we helped coordinate that. Our, we used our box trucks to get them out of there. The church rented a pod to put their furniture in and stuff. And we're still working with them. We assigned them out. So we did that. Uh, we also, in August, I told you about this, but in August, uh, we got First Baptist Church to host the State Dental Association. And in 26 hours, a Thursday afternoon, all day Friday, and Saturday until 3 o'clock, we had 750 community volunteers, 300 dental volunteers, 80-something dental chairs. We saw 1,412 people. We provided dental services anywhere from cleaning to root canals to crowns, making teeth, filling teeth. The value of that on an insurance basis was over one and a quarter million dollars that free services that were provided to people in need. When I walked out there on Friday morning at 5.30 in the morning, there were over 1,200 people in the dark standing in line trying to get their teeth fixed. As a result, that was just to bring attention to the problem. We have been working with Piedmont Medical Center to, for, for a dental initiative, and we've started it. Since the third week in January, Piedmont Medical Center has referred to us about 250 people that go to the emergency room, 1,200 plus went last year seeking dental. You can't get it there. The hospital will treat you if you have no money for a heart attack or a sinus infection, but they will not treat your teeth if you got a sore tooth. We had to fix that problem. And so we, they refer them to us. We refer them out to dentists that are in the community. Uh, and we are gonna, we're going to work to get the dentists paid. Medicaid started paying this year, and uh, we're going to work to get them paid, and we're going to create a pool of probably about $300,000 to serve as a recourse for a York County Dental Access line of credit card. And so if you don't have dental and you don't have the money to pay for it, then you get a $500 or $700 or $1,500 line of credit, and you go take that thing and go to the dentist that you want to, and you pay for it. 
because we want to come, uh, encourage people to get the care that they need and not have to wait till it's free. So those are some of the things that we're doing. Last one I'll mention is the York County Hospitality Worker Training Institute. It's a lot of words, but we want to train people for excellence in customer service in the hospitality industry. Not just restaurants and motels, but Walmarts and Chick-fil-A's and 7-Elevens and Brattonsville and wherever you retail clothing store, Ross. We want to train people to get those jobs and train them for excellence in customer service. And we're looking for a place to do that. We're looking for a building that we can have commercial kitchen and classroom space. And we want to give a certification for people there. That is a job training program that we can do. So those are the things that your <coughs> risk, you went out on a limb and let us use that property. And those are the type of things that we're doing <coughs> with this property and out of this property. And I want to thank you. Thank you, Dale. Any questions, thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else want to speak in favor? Anybody opposed? Do we have a motion to close? Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Do we have a new Move motion? Second. Discussion? All yes, sir. I, I just want to make Mr. a quick comment. I, was, I, I thought about Dale and, and his organization the other day when I saw in the paper how Keller Williams and some of their volunteers kind of reached out to him and doing some good things. And that, that piece of property actually sits um, in my district. And I, I go by it quite often. And there's, there's a lot of traffic going there to receive these services so he certainly utilized that facility and made the best of it otherwise it would be just sitting there um, going down and probably be dilapidated and who knows what to be spray painted on it busted out window so he certainly um, took what could have been a possible eyesore um, from several years ago and turned into a, a pretty good asset to to the community outreach that he's doing so I definitely applaud his efforts and I, I said I was going to reach out to you this week I'll, I'll stop by and, and talk to you about a couple things I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I'd just like to add one thing I think Dale forgot. He also trains them how to safely ride a bicycle and they're not, not creating traffic. I don't want you to talk anymore. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but, uh, but, they, but they definitely, you can tell, they have learned uh, bicycle safety. And another, I think, testament to, to what you've done in the past five years is uh, uh, the first time we approved this, we had a lot of people call back with some concerns about what might happen, and, and nothing but positive things have happened, and, and that's, a, that's a testament to what you all do, and we appreciate it. Amen. Uh, question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, hold a public hearing and consider first reading of an ordinance to amend the code of the county of York, South Carolina, Chapter 154, Sections 15095. 154.110, 154.112, 154.125, 154.126, and Chapter 154 Appendix, Charts, Drafts, Figures, Schedules, Section 1, uh, Schedule of Fees and Charges, A6 and B1 through 5, in order to amend the requirements for road inspections, the design standards for roads and sidewalks, the posting of improvement guarantee funds for road construction, the warranty periods for road maintenance and the form of performance guarantees to eliminate binder course paving bonds and roadway surface course paving guaranteed funds to amend the fees for water and sewer reinspection and improvement guarantee funds to provide for a public hearing and to provide for other matters related thereto. Anybody here want to speak in favor? Anybody opposed? Move to close. Got a motion to close. Do you have a discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Move to approve first reading. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, old business. Council to consider second reading of an ordinance entitled to establish operating and capital budgets for the operation of the county government of York County for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2015, to provide for the levy of taxes for York County for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2015, to provide for the expenditure of tax revenues and other county funds, to provide for other fiscal matters related to county government. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. We have a second. Second. Discussion. Yes, sir. And Mr. Henderson, I want to remind all council members this is a time where we need to give feedback to the administration because we have third reading the next time. So. We don't need to bring any surprises later. Mr. Henderson. Yes, I first of all just want to make it very clear like like we've done before 
and from years past that a three rating system is really a, a beautiful thing uh, because at any point you could change, you can modify, you can uh, just totally get rid of something and, and, and figure out a way to start over or to just change it, uh, totally rearrange, whatever you want to do by the third reading. Uh, so even today is definitely not in stone, but uh, for the sake of moving it forward and further discussion uh, at, at our workshops, um, this is what I, I would assume that we will do, but I want to make it clear that uh, some of the things and the items that were presented uh, from extra security to uh, the 20 something new positions or whatever it was, uh, and I'm for sure some of these things are needed, uh, especially uh, in my mind, I, it's just a matter of uh, prioritizing some of these items. Um, just like we've done in the past, we didn't give everything that everybody wanted it ended up being a portion so uh, I think security is very important at this point because in today's world it's it's an issue and it can happen right here as we all know uh, so I would uh, I, I'm looking at the, the possibility of a compromise and the poss and the possibility of a of a um, you know, not not just all out with everything that's been requested, but but really, really looking at what is absolutely needed, and maybe react on that portion by itself. You done? Yes. Um, Come back. Anybody else want to speak? I'll say that, I've got, that I've got several things. Um, one, uh, one of the budget items that we are being asked is a request by Sharon View Fire Department, excuse me, Riverview, not Sharon View, Riverview Fire Department right. to allow them to raise their millage uh, to build a new firehouse. Um, one of the questions that I brought up today at Finance and Operation is why aren't all firehouses in York County uniform? Why are, why are we building? Why is every individual group out there building their own firehouse to their own specs for their own architects without any great overview from the county? Um, I, I want to urge this council to, we need to take a hard look, and it's not something I think we can do it in budget, but we need to get a grasp on what's happening uh, at the fire departments and go to a uniform. You hire an architect one time, you hire a set of engineers one time, you build a base. And it's very easy to say, well, we'll make that into a two bay, three bay, and add a bay to it. Uh, and it would cost minimal to ever have to update that. Instead, we're recreating the wheel every time. And I'd like to see that fall more under the jurisdiction of the county. We have hired a project management group to oversee <coughs> county projects, yet we're just going to let the fire boards go off and build anything they want without any oversight. Um, seems to me that ought to be something we should take a look at. Um, and I've, I'm going to be a while. I, I, everything you see that has a tab is a question I have, so I'm going to just kind of run through them fairly quickly. Yeah. On the recreation allocation, I think there are one, two, three, four options. I think we ought to start saying which option we prefer. Um, as can be imagined, I prefer the unincorporated tax base because that would increase for my area the most. However, I see the logic in saying, let's combine it uh, with the average student population and the uh, tax base, uh, which I guess is column number four uh, un under that, uh, which is kind of a hybrid of, of the two. I think last year when we did the budget and we talked about recreation allocation, it clearly indicated that somebody had sat in a room 15 years ago and made up numbers, and there was absolutely no basis for it. Um, what I've asked us to do is have a basis for why we're giving any entity money, um, certainly basing it off of children in school and the unincorporated tax base makes the most sense since this is our money going towards it. But I, I would hope we can reach a consensus on one of those four and not just stick with the old random numbers that we had. Um, 
I was looking at the CVB's budget, and I apologize. I know the CVB was before us one day last week, and unfortunately, I did not have that email at the time, and I had not been able to really go through it. When I go through the CVB's budget, I notice that their major increase is about $84,000 for social media management and branding process. Um, and that, that is money that they intend to spend on a, on, a, on a return basis year after year after year. And that's on page three of the CVB line item budget. Um, the CVB's budget is growing by $81,250 uh, this year. I, I oppose that. What's that? Uh, that is a, uh, it went from 456 to 81,250, so. Okay. I mean, or, or to, from 456 to 538, excuse me. Um, I, I oppose that. I don't mind them growing at a rate that makes sense. If you, if you need a percentage so that you can give cost of living increases to your employees, you, you want to expand marketing. But what, the, in all honesty, what this number is, this number is tied to age tax generation. We, we, you add it up any way you want it, it comes to around that 50% by the time you do the marketing, capital, and personnel. I, I'd like to unhook those two things and, and to jump someone's budget by $81,250 just because more people ate at restaurants in York County doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm sure the sheriff would my would would love to have an extra eighty one thousand dollars in his budget and i'm sure the magistrates would like to have an extra eighty one thousand i certainly don't want to tie it directly to that in the same vein the lake wiley visitor center budget jumped from fifty thousand dollars to eighty nine thousand dollars a forty nine thousand dollar increase um, and and i oppose that I, and, and this is why the lake wiley visitor center is basically the lake wiley chamber of commerce um, when they came up last week, they talked about what they do. They answer telephone calls. They direct people to, to various organizations. They talk about tourism, where you ought to eat, where you ought to go. Well, so does every chamber of commerce in York County. Um, I, I, I spoke with the TKK Chamber of Commerce. They said that's exactly what they do. They do the same thing at the Fort Mill Chamber of Commerce. We are basically subsidizing the Lake Wiley uh, Chamber of Commerce by giving them $89,000 a year of age tax dollars. Um, certainly, am I saying that they're not worthy of it? No, they do a great job and what they do is, is worthy. But is this the place we should take the money to give to them? I, I don't think we should. Um, and hopefully we can reach some consensus before the <coughs> final reading on whether we want to be subsidizing the chambers because no other chamber is doing this. All the other chambers, from what I understand, apply for grants. They want money. They apply for a grant to get money. Lake Wiley, they don't apply for a grant. They just get $89,000. I'd like to see that change. Uh, and I'll try to reference y'all some pages now that I'm into the actual book. Page one. <laughs> it's always nice. Line 533, uh, County Council is budgeted $4,000 for cell phones. We spent $0 on cell phones in 13. Right. We spent $0 in 14. I imagine we're going to spend $0 in 15. That is not correct. Well, if somebody's going to take a cell phone, um, I, I'd like to see that eliminated. I, we, I have a cell phone. We have cell phones. We're not using this money. It, if, and if not, reduce it down to a level that reflects. And this is a minor change. It's only four thousand dollars, but we're, this council is talking about raising taxes on everybody in the county. Um, seems to me if we could eat away at enough of these four to twenty thousand dollar numbers, we'd actually get there. That's on page one. Page three, and, and it's not going to be this bad the whole time. Trust me. <laughs> There's just I, I really went. It's making mine worse and worse. I really went through the council budget because it's the one thing that I could understand right, as I looked budget. at it. Of course. Uh, the council budget, we budgeted eight thousand dollars for the council to travel. The, the most we've spent in two years is thirty-six hundred dollars. Uh, thankfully, we're no longer budgeting ninety-five hundred dollars like we used to. 
Um, I'd like to see the council budget cut in half to go travel. If, if you know, it just doesn't. Let's have it reduced to what we're actually spending, not just some number that we think we might go spend. Because if you if you put in this number, every time you inflate a number, even if it's four or five thousand dollars, if you do it on a hundred of these things, we're now talking half a million dollars. So this is a good way to kind of draw some money down. I would also, we are on, on page four. <laughs> it gets better. You're good. Um, Only 400 I, I, I want, <laughs> pages to go. Line 631 is council food. We're budgeting that we're going to eat $9,000 worth of peanuts and water, um, drink water from the council table up here. We've never, I mean, we've spent, somehow we've spent $4,600. Uh, and anyway, we go to various things and it gets spent. I, again, I would like that number to maybe reflect a five-year average of some sort. Try to get an idea of what we're really spending and draw these numbers down. I know if we don't spend it, it goes into the general fund. I, right. I, I fully get that. But I also, when I'm being asked to raise taxes, I want to make sure that, we, that we're really trying to hone these numbers down. We don't do zero-based budgeting, so let's try to get some of right. these on a better average. Uh, as I move through. Page six. <laughs> page six now. Page, um, it, uh, this is a generic question. Page 13, and, I, and there are at least 40 or 50 of these entries. We've spent $0 in 13, 13, 14. We've spent $0 in 14, 15, yet we budget something in 15, 16. I mean, there are pages of it. Uh, page 14 has Where's three that? of them. Page 13 has one other, like 690, Family Court Specialized Department Supplies. L line 341, uh, IVD funds, technical services. Um, it, and some of these are 5,000, 2,000, 500. I only went through the ones that are just 500 and above, and I circled at least 30 of them. Some of them are moved. But, well, well, but these ones aren't moved, and that's the problem is that they, they're not blanking them out. It's, you don't spend money for three years in a row, you don't need to be in the budget. Um, it's time to start trying to eliminate some of this out of the budget. Um, and I, I mean, I, I mean there, it's on page 19, it's on page 20. It, I mean, I can go literally just go page by. It was the number one thing as I drove through it. And, and, so, and I, and I only did the ones that are, five, like I said, $500 and above. Uh, Catawba Magistrate. What page is that? Zero at page 58. Zero, zero. Yet we budget him $1,700. If there's an explanation for it, all I need is a little, hey, this is where he's going to spend $1,700. But we've been budgeting him $1,000 a year every year for three years, and he's never spent a dime. Yep. So, you know, there ought, there, ought to be a, there ought to be some balance here. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing on, you know, page 66, page 67. Going to spend some money on a DUI wireless communication. Well, we budgeted a thousand dollars every year for three years. We've never, never spent it. Um, I'll try it, and I'm not going to belabor these. Y'all get. I think staff gets the point. You can find them for yourself there throughout this book. And what I want to do is, I and, and if you have anybody wants to see where they're all at, please come look at my book. They are tabbed. Uh, another one that really. I loved this one. It's on page 166, line 540. It's planning DST advertising. Zero spent in 13, zero spent in 14, but yet 2,200. And it, and it actually says the budget amount for this year is the same as last year's budget. That scares me when I read that in a budget that we're just budgeting exactly what we budgeted last year because that's what, we, that's what we've done. And for three years in a row, we've never spent a dime of this money. Um, I, we, if it, you know, if it did, if it wasn't, you weren't paying, if I wasn't paying taxes and writing a check every year for this money, maybe it wouldn't bother me as much, but this just, it just, it, there's pages and pages of this. Uh, I'm flipping through trying to get to a, to something other than that. So these are all zeros again. More zeros, more zeros. Aha, here's something I actually want to take out. Um, the last, page. on page 224, it's the very first thing. It's $23,700, and it, what it is is the media track. And I, I really was impressed with it. 
you'll, you'll be able to pull up an agenda online, you'll be able to click on it, and it'll take you into the video right where it is. That is a fantastic piece of technology, but at $23,700 reoccurring from now on, I gotta believe that you can scroll through the one hour, two hour long meeting till you get to a point and you can hit play for the council to talk. Um, it seems to me at 23-7, there are a whole lot of part-time employees. That could, there's one, that's one a year every year that we could hire and this is a county that always talks about how we're understaffed. Well, there's 23-7, so I, I would want that removed. More zeros. Thank goodness for those zeros. Those you got a bunch of oh, I got no. Let me tell you, I, zeros were easy to find. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, the, the budget is full of them. Uh, Three thousand dollars worth it in the detention program. Never spent a what dime. Page, page three forty-four. I mean, I, I I go on and on about this stuff. Uh, let's see. I've got more than. Uh, all right. On line three, page 389, line 634, we are recommending spending $127,000 to feed prison inmates. Um, we spent $66,000 so far this year, because uh, we're and we are spending on 100 inmates a day. I don't have a problem with that if that's actually an accurate average. From what I hear, though, is that the one of the pods are is totally shut down over there. I want to just make sure that that's an accurate average, that we're really, you know, if, if, we're, if we're feeding 100, feed 100. But if, if it's closer to 60, let's, let's, let's take this thing down. That is a big number. $127,000 to feed inmates is a large amount of money. 67 so far this year. Yeah, when you've spent only the detention centers, the exit has got the closed pot, not the prison. Okay, I, you're right, you're yeah, right. But, I mean, no. but if there's 100, feed them. I mean, obviously. Don't want anybody starving. Same thing on page 392. Um, we budgeted 20,000. We've spent $8,400 so far this year, and we're gonna we want to budget another 20,000. And it's a line line 320. And what we're looking at doing it's, it covers emergency veterinary service after normal hours. I'd like to base this on some type of five-year average cost as opposed to. It looks like we're just shooting. In 2013, you spent $8,400. In 2014, you spent. $8,400. Seems to me we're about to spend right at $8,400, but we're budgeting $20. Um, there, there's another $12,000 worth of stuff. The, the line directly below it is even worse. Line 325 is animal control account covers emergency veterinary services after normal hours. It's kind of the same thing. We budgeted $15 for it. We've spent $1,700. The year before, we spent $2,300. Um, you know, there, there's you another $12,000. You start adding this up and mm -hmm. we're hiring, sheriff gets more deputies, we inspect houses faster and people get their COs. Um, it is the same thing on page 393, line 626, animal control, fuel and oil. We budgeted 65,000, we've spent 37. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of a question is, are, are we spending this money? Uh, I mean, if, if it's just going into the general fund, what line was that? Uh, that is line 626 on page 393. I'd like to see some five-year averages there. I'd like to see on page 395. We've spent, we've never spent more than seven, or in the last two years, we've never spent more than 79. This year, we've spent 56, but yet we budget 92 every year. Again, I just, if we're going to spend it, I don't have a problem spending it. You've got to have this, they've got to have the money, they've got to operate over at Animal Control, but I certainly, would like to see a budget that just doesn't say, well, this is what you gave us last year. We want the same thing we wanted last year. And that's and that's what, when I see a discrepancy in what you've spent versus what you're getting, that's what it tells me. It tells me that they're just saying, give me what you've always given me. And we, and we won't, we may not spend it, but in case we do, let's have it. Um, curious, page 397, we budgeted a quarter of a million dollars for a pennies for progress for referendum, or two hundred thousand for a pennies for progress for referendum. I'm curious, page what that is? Page three ninety seven. Line three twenty. Yeah, two hundred fifty budget. It is it, well. It says in yeah. engineering consulting and tech fee fifty thousand for consulting, and then two hundred thousand just for cost yeah. estimates. Okay. Yeah. 
And it says it assumes a vote in 2016. I thought the vote was 2017. It is. She okay. It after okay. Well, That's correct. So we still need the quarter of 200,000 this year? Will it be another 200,000 next year? Okay. Could we do 100,000 this year and 100,000 next year? I mean, it's, I mean, if you're talking about taxing people in the, in the government just holding on to $200,000 for and not getting any interest on it. You have to issue the... Oh, they have to issue oh. I think you need those estimates for the committee as well. Okay. The, the forms for you. Mm -hmm. that's, why I'm, that's why I'm asking. Uh, there's a, on page 398, there's another one of those zero, zero, and then a $4,000 spend. Um, yes. Uh, we're, getting getting Matt Green we're getting in the we're getting into we're getting Matt Green ones. That's not good. <laughs> uh, this this I didn't understand. Page four oh nine. There's some fuel and oil spending. We've spent seventy nine thousand. We budgeted one forty five. I assume gas prices went down. So you so we spent less, but we're budgeting in case the gas prices go back up. All right. No, I, don't, I, mean, I, I don't have a. I get that. I just wanted to. I wanted to make sure. Um, over at Ebenezer Park, page 425, we budgeted 162,000 last year. We spent 113. We've recommended another 161,000. I'm wondering, are we really spending that kind of money on salary and wages? And if we're not, again, let's 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 pull it down a little bit, get it to a more realistic number. Who's making positions? Over? Uh, line, page 436, economic development special advertising on line 540. Again, budgeting $25,000. We've never spent more than $9,600 for it, ever. In fact, this year we've only spent 62. Yet we're, if we're going to spend that money, let's well, we let's kind of account for it. If not, let's not necessarily throw it into a pot and hope $19,000 gets randomly spent. And this one just, and this one, I, Beth, I'm sure you can explain it and be, you, you make a lot of sense to you. Page 445, workers' comp insurance. We budgeted a million dollars. We spent 478. Makes sense. How are we going to, I mean, are we self insured up to a certain point? Um, I didn't, David Larson explained that part too, but we, well, we all, we have to spend We're in the municipal association, though, right? No, they, they, not for workers' comp. Not for comp. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. No, no. We, we've opted out of them. We used to yeah. Be. Okay. yeah, we used to be. You're paying a third-party administrator to. I would pay a TPA. Then you're, yes, sir. Okay. My understanding is that's paying the claims out of that amount. You've got a balance there. We originally put a little bit less than that in there, but um, right before we printed the budget, our risk manager asked us to increase that. Okay. Um, in, in 13, we spent 512,000. This year, we spent 478. It just that is a significant increase up to a million dollars. And if if, if you need that. to put that in reserves in order to pay the claims, then so be it. I just when I was going through it, it it, it struck me as odd. We do a lot of what is considered direct assistance direct assistance assistance funding to various organizations um, these are all worthy organizations but again to me the question is should government be in the business of picking which charities win and which charities lose um, this the, you know, and, and this is what we've done and starting on page 447 kind of on is what you, is you this is where you see this uh, you see money going there's a soil water conservation district obviously we have to give some money toward it but last year my numbers indicate that we could have cut that by about twenty six hundred dollars uh, but we did not again keystone there is money that by state law we must give keystone there is some money that we give keystone that we just choose to give them um, and I believe that's about somewhere in the twenty five thousand dollar neighborhood from what I can tell um, that's page 449. Page 449. Page 450, you get the Board of Disability Special Needs. Again, something that we are legally 
obligated to do, yet we, there's about $21,000 that we're not obligated to do, yet we give them. Is it worthy? Perhaps, but these are, these are big numbers. These begin to add up towards this kind of million dollar total. Um, again, York County Council on Aging, about $17,000 that we don't necessarily have to give. The Clemson Cooperative Extension, I think it's about $6,800. Safe Passage, about $5,000. Um, not, to, not to pick on Place for Hope, $400. Um, the, the Boys and Girls Club, I, I don't know what the number is there, but I think it's about $11,000. That, that is alcohol money. Um, all of it, 100%? Is it 100% of that? So that's all required? All right, that's fine. I, mean, I, I don't want to take money away from somebody who is who we are, we are required to do, but I think we have to take a hard look at what we're required to do versus what we're not. Um, again, if you look at the fire boards, they're full of the little zero, zero, two and $3,000 pops. Um, feel free to go through that. Those are my kind of my initial scans of it. My biggest concern is when when staff asks for, administration asks for a tax increase, um, certainly we have to we have to provide services to county residents, and I, I don't have a problem paying for those. But I am concerned by we're not we don't we have departments that aren't spending their allocations and haven't been for years spending what they've been given in this budget, and. I certainly don't want to get into a situation where they are asking just because they think they should. If you need the money, justify it, and I think this council will give it to them. But I, I hate when I see you know, three thousand, four thousand, eight hundred, even if it's eight hundred dollars, it's just not being spent. Um, I, I think we should cut those, and I think we should take a hard look at anything um, that is not a requirement. The state requires that we pay, that we fund X amount of items. Anything that we're not required to fund, we need to take a hard look and make a determination is does it fit into our strategic plan that this council agreed on? And if it doesn't fit one of the criteria of our strategic plan, I think we have a duty to say no to that. Um, and I would ask that between now and next Monday, or not mo next Monday, Monday week, um, if you all could come up with a list, I know you did last year for me, a list of things that are not required to be funded by the state that we just do on our own. Um, and I know that that last year it was a fairly decent list. Um, I'm happy to give it back to you in case you didn't remember it from last year. But if you'd go through that just so we can have an idea, because last year I think that was about $613,000 worth of things that this council, and, and if it fits in the strategic plan, I don't have a problem with us keeping it. But if we can't justify it under our own strategic plan, then I think we need to start getting very serious about stopping some of this spending. Those were uh, pretty straightforward points. Did you, you get the information? We got it. Go ahead. One of you. All right. The, um, and I'm certainly not going to answer them all uh, verbatim, but I appreciate a lot of what you said and, and agree with more than you probably realize. <laughs> um, Riverview, uh, the, the fire, I think not only, I, I agree with you 100% there, I think not only do we need to limit the buildings, but we need to limit the processes and, and, uh, and, and similar, similar, I think that we need to take a hard look at the fire service all around, just like you said. Recreation allocation, I appreciate what you said about that. In the first budget workshop, I think you missed it, we talked about doing it a different way, but then we kind of said that we don't have to decide the allocation before the budget's over. We can do that after the process as long as we got the right number correctly. We will have to decide it before we give it to anybody. Right. So we were trying to sense. save that a little bit. I have some, if we want to decide it before the budget's over, I have, I mean, I got some other things, other things I'd like to, to look at. Um, I, the, I wasn't going to say anything about the CVB and the social media, but I was just uh, curious. We had a council member last year that kept telling them to develop an app and I wonder if these <laughs> if these uh well they have an app I have the app on my are, phone are 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 uh are dedicated to that um they uh and and some other things um like I said I wasn't going to hit on everything but I guess a couple of couple of points I wanted to make for sure was uh <coughs> the and I understand there probably are so you know if we've been spending 90, if we're budgeting 96,000 and we're and we're spending uh 
1500 on it, we probably need to look at that. But a lot of the things, what we, what I want to be careful, and you know, I, I think we got a good budget process. What I want to be careful is that we don't start doing things that encourage you to spend everything in your budget at the end of the year, so that so that we don't have these comments. Right. Uh, and some of the some of these line items are, are necessary. I would imagine that fuel the fuel service for animal control is somewhat similar to the generator uh, fuel that we budget at the 911 center. We budget it in case we have an emergency. Uh, you know, I think it's six thousand dollars or something in case we have an emergency. But if we don't have an emergency, um, we just run a test every every month, and it's like, a, and we only spend about eight hundred bucks. So that, but that's those differences are explainable. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that that when we're looking at stuff, I don't disagree that we need to look at some of this stuff, but let's keep that that in mind because I don't want to create a don't want to create an a, a atmosphere where you need to spend everything in your budget or you're afraid you won't get it the next year. Um, I've seen that happen before. Direct, re direct assistance, um, we wrote a, had a white paper on it a couple of years ago and we spent three years getting, getting it mostly reduced. I think uh, A Place for Hope missed, missed one of the years, which is why they're in this year's budget. But, uh, but most of the ones that we're giving money to direct assistance should be doing what they call quasi-governmental quasi uh, duties, but um, but I don't mind uh, looking at looking at stuff, and certainly think we should. Especially appreciate the fact we're going to increase taxes. We need to look at look at everything. Uh, but I uh, um, I have faith in some of those zeros and and why they are. But it does sound like you found a couple or two that we need to look at, Mr. Roddy. Um, I did. I made a cut. I tried to try to keep up with Mr. Johnson and his. His I can concern. do it again. What page? <laughs> Start at page one. <laughs> um, I'll jot it down some notes, but I'm not going to touch on them all. Um, certainly, when you're looking at, at at line items that has the potential to fluctuate due to certain things going on in the market, if it's dealing with purchases, um, we may be at the mercy of the market with the prices going up or coming down. You have to kind of have a little buffer in there. I don't think we can go to a uh, to the penny budget with some of these items because if we do and what what will happen if we get caught out there needing a little more then they have to come back to us we have to amend the budget so it's always I'm you know no one likes to hear you know put a little extra in there just in case but that's why we all have car insurance life insurance you know some of these uh, household savings funds for just in case so we, we can't really I understand if if we spent zero in the last two years we shouldn't come in and budget Fifteen, twenty thousand, or forty, fifty thousand. You know, some of those can be uh, reduced down. Uh, but when you're looking at some of the services that that's provided to the community, like the Keystone that you mentioned, the Board of Disability, York County Council on Aging, Safe Passage. You know, some of those things, it may be a small requirement by the state. But if you look at what York County does with a lot of these services, that I think that speaks to the the mentality of what kind of community we want to have because it'll be hard to tell safe passage no we're not going to help fund you a nurse a sane nurse that deals with um, a, a child that's been um, uh, inappropriately touched when you have to go in and do all those so we this community does a lot more than required I think if we just get down to the basics I think a lot of people will suffer even more not to say that Dale Dub doesn't have the capacity to take on more, but I think we'll start to see a lot more people fall into that needing a safety net if we start to cut certain things that we do above and beyond what the state requires us to do. I think that's kind of what makes this whole area, Rock Hill, York County, Fort Mill, Clover, York, that's what makes us a little more special than just areas that just try to do just the minimum. I think some of these agencies that we do fund above and beyond the minimum, I think those communities and those um, agencies that serve those communities need that extra because if we don't do it, it falls on the shoulders of people like Dale and, and other organizations who they don't have the funding to do it. And I, I think if, if it, it requires just a little bit more to make everybody have that little safety net to, to the where they can have that dignity of uh, being in this community, I think I'm willing to, to ask the taxpayers to put a little more on that particular line versus um, funding some other things that we that we do take part in, um, and and I know the the line item with the boys and girls club, like Chad mentioned, those funds come out of the um, the alcohol permit sales that businesses apply for alcohol sales on Sundays. So some of the money that we do send out is 
de designated for specific purposes. It is not coming so much out of the um, so much the general fund. Some of these um, some of these pots of money have been designated to cover certain things, and I think um, that's definitely one of them. Um, certainly, like Chad said, a place for hope is kind of still on our our books for a small portion of money. I think it was somewhere around four or five hundred dollars, and I don't want to spend too much time on. And if you have a a thousand four or five hundred dollar items, that starts to add up. Uh, but I don't want to spend too much time beating up on on money that we're not spending. I really look at money that we are spending, where people are sometimes <coughs> may make a run at the end of the year, like Chad said, to spend money just to make sure that they get it back the following year. I would much rather they return that money to us and we put it back um, versus sending that mentality or that mindset now. If you don't spend it, we're going any any line item that has a zero for two years in a row. We're going to just wipe it out. I think that's probably that may not be the message that we want to send to to department heads and, and definitely with the budget team because it's kind of a catch twenty two. I know if you don't spend it, you know why ask for it, but then if we take it away from you and you need it, then what what position are we putting ourselves in? But I think our budget team does a, a real good job, and maybe we can reduce some of those zeros that's in the book. Um, in, in a different fashion that we're not sending that message. All right, guys, spend it because council is going to cut it if you don't spend it over a two-year period. So I think we can, if we can find a way to get that message that we're looking at those items and, and when there's huge gaps in what was spent and what was budgeted, um, start to reduce some of those down just a little bit maybe. Um, whatever was spent the last, some, some type of average maybe put, um, a 10 or 15 percent contingency above that number, um, I don't think too many things are going to run 40, 50 percent in a in a prior in an incoming year. And if it does, then I guess that we have to deal with that. But it was certainly overall, if we did this everywhere, we saw zeros and a and a big gap in between what was spent and what was budgeted. We could reduce uh, some of the millage down, but at the same time, um, we do have. Um, this council has shown reservations to raise taxes, uh, and we kind of wait till we get our back up against the wall to raise them. Um, so we, we do have to be mindful of what, what this body is, is, is willing to do when it gets down to it, because we don't raise taxes just to put money over in the coffers to save for a rainy day. And I think sometimes, and here recently now, we've kind of gotten caught out there having to do certain things just to try to play catch up. So I don't want to get to a point where um, we're getting too tight with the millage or, or what we're taking in because um, it's not always going to be as, as um, pretty and shiny around here when it comes to keeping these taxes low. We're going to have to start increasing taxes to, to take in um, so we can pay for some of these services. I think the quality of life in, in York County is far better than what some of our surrounding counties have uh, or experiencing right now. And, and some of the issues that we're dealing with and some of the, what some may perceive to be a problem those other areas would love to have some of our problems because we have some, we have one of our major problems now that I see is we have a problem figuring out where we're going to spend some of our money. You know, other counties, they have a problem with even having money. So I think it's a, it's a, I guess a good problem if you want to have one, but I don't want to try to tighten things up too tight to where we're left scratching our head thinking, well, now we got to slam them against the wall to raise this money because we didn't budget for it. We didn't give ourselves enough cushion in there to to do it. But you know, overall, I think we got a, a pretty good pretty good budget. Besides some of the zeros that that's been pointed out this evening, we we probably could knock maybe a meal off if we went through every item, cut every zero. We may come up with reducing it one meal, um, but that's that's a lot to to knock off. What twelve bucks per hundred thousand dollars a house? So. Um, and we, I guess if we can save the taxpayers 12 bucks, I guess maybe we should go for it, but I don't know how much work that will put on what's went into putting this budget together for us. But I think overall we got a, we got some pretty good bones to work with. I don't think we're too far off on hitting a mark, but we can always do better. We can always live better. We can always do better at the house. We can always do better up here on council, but at, at some point um, we kind of have to go with what we got. Uh, and I think we're all saying the same thing. I think it's just the spirit of the request. And certainly he's not saying absolute, and you're not saying absolute. I mean, when you get to the end of it, you, you all, you, we're all agreeing with each mm -hmm. other. So the points that Mr. Johnson made are well worth the 
inspection of the county manager just to refocus on some numbers just to see what he can think is practical. I'll, um, just a couple of things for me. Um, first, I expressed some concerns last time we were together about Riverview Fire Station and the costs of it. Um, and I did get some more information, so I just want to, you know, make it clear that I was not, you know, just picking on Riverview or thinking that, you know, they don't need a fire station or whatever. My concern was that their cost per square foot was about $225 or so. And Bethel, which was the last one that was built, and I've got plans for all these in my car if anybody would like to look at them. <laughs> um, Bethel was um, about 147 a square foot, I believe. Um, you know, someone made the comment that Bethel was $2 million. Well, Bethel was 14,000 square foot. Riverview is 6,359 or so. Uh, but I did get a little more clarification this week, uh, thanks to staff members that work over the weekend and answer emails when I send them out. But um, Riverview does have some less than perfect issues with their land. They, you know, fire stations have to be put in a geographic area where they meet the, the five mile radius. Um, and the land they happen to get is not very um, desirable as far as the, the grade and stuff. So they're, they're having to put in a retaining wall, retention ponds, curb cuts, um, a lot of other stuff that Bethel did not have to do. Um, so I feel a little better about that, but I do think there's still some things that need to be looked at with that, you know, consultant. I love Michael's idea about some, some standardized you know, mm -hmm. plans for some of these things um, to cut out some of that. Amen. Um, you know, I know I'm going to quickly try to do this. I know, you know, Chad mentioned uh, the recreation tax and that we don't have to decide that tonight. Um, but I do think that using the average of the three ways is a better way to go with you know, the, the population, that type thing, as far as the average for how to di divide up that recreation tax. Um, where I have a little heartburn was what I said in the last budget meeting we had in cutting certain ones of them by a pretty substantial amount of money right off the bat. Um, I'd like council to look at the fact that we have funds sitting in a recreation account that, you know, has been set aside for county funds all this time that we haven't spent. Um, there's over uh, $907,000 in that fund as of the end of this fiscal year. Uh, we could use 121000 of that to keep everybody whole for this year. Um, you know, increase the ones that get the increase according to the new formula, but the ones that get cut, take from that fund and keep them whole. That would leave a balance of about $786,000. And I don't think the county needs to sit on funds just to sit on them. So I'd like to see us use the new formula for dividing up those funds and divide that remaining $786,000 balance to all the municipalities and the school districts and, and just quit sitting on money for no particular reason. Um, you know, we can do one time to each of them and you get that money that, you know, we don't have to sit here and talk about, you know, which grant application, this, that, or the other. We divide it up equal, you know, fairly based on these percentages and we tell them, okay, next year, that's what your percentage is. But we don't cut them right off the bat this year. We give them some lump sum. They can do some projects, whatever they want, and they know next year that's what the new formula is going to be. Um, also, I'd like us to look at, um, I'd like to make this in the form of an amendment, but uh, it might be hard to do because it's contingent on um, item number 11 under new business for us. Uh, but if item number 11 under new business passes, um, that would free up, and that is the um, Knight Stadium money um, and using that for an economic development fund. If that passes and that happens, then there's $150,000 in economic development's budget for a study that needs to be done to help us, you know, with a, a consultant on marketing and how much land we need for, you know, um, industrial and that type thing. That money could go back into general fund. And in looking at the budget and talking to different staff members, inspections, we heard last time about how far behind we are on home inspections. 
and getting further behind all the time. Um, I've heard from some of our builders about how they're having to pull crews off of jobs and send them somewhere else and jobs are just stopping, which costs our builders money. And I believe our strategic planning that we did, our county vision statement is to provide an environment where all citizens and businesses can thrive and succeed. If we're making our businesses, our con construction businesses, pull people off and stop work because we can't do our job to get to them, then I don't think we're living up to our vision statement. So that 150000 that would free up from funding the Economic Development Fund could go back in general fund, and we could add one more building inspector besides the one that planning is asking for. Um, and I'd be glad to break it down if you want to see it. I went through 41913 is the salary, um, 41913-20 is their insurance, their Social Security, their required retirement, a new wireless phone for them, uh, training, fuel for the car, repairs to the car, uh, their safety equipment they need. You add all that up, that's $63,633, which still leaves $86,366 of that $150,000 that would still be able to go back into general fund, either to add up with some of these other things that have been brought up tonight to maybe not increase the millage quite as much or to help with our general fund balance to keep us in line with that. Um, you know, if I'm right, and, and Audra could probably tell me better, but if you look at a 2,000 square foot home with an average deck and a two car garage, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of $760,000 in fees for that one home. And I've heard the numbers tossed around quite a bit, $760 in fees. I heard 1,000 there. That's what I did. Um, sorry, 760. Um, I believe someone said that we currently have been approved in different subdivision stuff somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 homes in York County. Uh, $760 if that's the average in 7,000 homes, that's $5.3 million in income for the county that we're either not getting pushing back or slowing down because we can't get to them to inspect them. So I think that would be, you know, again, contingent on item 11 later tonight, but um, that's something that I'd like to see us look at as a motion or an amendment to the budget to be able to do that. And lastly, I have some heartburn with the CVB and with um, I think all of our, um, not necessarily the CVB, excuse me, Lake Wiley Chamber. Um, I think all of our chambers do exactly what Lake Wiley Chamber does. Um, all the other chambers apply for grants and get their funds that they need that way. And I think we're setting a very bad precedent, or have already set it, I guess, because we've done it for several years in the past, to just do a line item to a chamber when we've got six other chambers in the county that we don't do a line item to, and we don't support them directly. Um, I think that's a, a bad precedent, so thank you. Bill, I think I'm hearing a pattern on that one. Yes, sir. So that one's going to be Chair. good address. Right. Let me, and I'll come back. Ms. <laughs> Cox. Well, this is the first time I've obviously gone through budgeting. I want to thank Beth for all the hard work. I can't imagine how much time and effort has been spent in that. And um, it's almost kind of like you have your baby here, and it, it's, it's been getting ripped up a little bit. So um, I want to be cognizant of that. I do want to, um, to thank all of the folks that participated in this. This process was a little bit different than what I expected because I think it's a little bit harder for the average Joe to understand how our budgeting process has worked. And I appreciate Michael's comments. I don't think anyone disagrees with the fact that we need to budget what we actually spend and let's not do any more because, you know, Memorial Day is coming up. What is that about? That's about remembering the folks that actually died to allow us to have the freedoms that we have to sit here and to make these laws. And one of the things that they did this for was to ensure that we had limited government, free enterprise, freedom and personal responsibility, and that government only does the essential functions. We don't need to be up here competing with private markets to do things. And so I think the point is well taken that we spend the money on the things that are essential for government. Um, and I have no problem with going through there, and if there are zeros, let's, let's, let's put it to what it actually is. Um, in terms of some of, the, some of the individual things that were brought up, with the fire departments. I think that's probably something that needs to be taken up in a committee 
um, as a general issue after the budgeting process has occurred because one size doesn't fit all. And when we try to create a rule that fits everyone, we lose the purpose of volunteerism. We lose the purpose of our volunteer fire departments who are out there working. What McConnell, and, and I could say this more than anyone else because my district encompasses McConnell's and curves all the way around up to Fort Mill. What Fort Mill needs is not the same thing that what McConnell's needs. And that doesn't mean that the folks aren't being treated fairly. That means let's look at it and let's see what the needs are and let's base our government on that. Let's not try and, and make everything. You have to have what I have. We've got to get away from that. Um, with the recreation allocation, based upon the history, it was the decision of the voters that York County not get in the business of doing recreation. We need to honor that vote. And if there's going to be a change or if, you know, there's discussions that have come up uh, about maybe, you know, the county should get in that, that needs to be the voter decision. Because at this point, the money that has collected from the unincorporated citizens should be distributed. And, and I don't disagree with what Chad has said. The number is what it is, unless we're going to eliminate that altogether, which I think it offsets what the unincorporated citizens are, are using in the city, in the cities to be able to do that, then let's hash out what the appropriate um, formula is that doesn't have to be done today. Let's, let's not deal with the politics of that. CVB budget, I don't think it's an essential fu function, so I'm in line with, with what Robert um, and Michael have said about that. Um, one of the bigger concerns, and we can go through all of these things and line item this to death, but one of the bigger questions I have is that in the report that we got, we have had a, an increase in the unincorporated population of about 16,000 folks this year, 30-something thousand throughout the county. Yet we're talking about 21 employees, $1.3 million increase that is never going to stop because once you, once you bring on an employee, they're there. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest concern. I want to know how we're prioritizing that, the needs that are in that group. Um, it seems to me that we have folks that are providing justification for it, but that's different than do we need it. And how do we prioritize of those things what we actually need to have? Because 36,000 people, and, and I can appreciate <coughs> the fact that we, have, that we have had cutbacks and that we need to address some issues that have gone along, but that doesn't justify 21 employees. And I think that is where I'm going to have the biggest heartburn because we're talking about something that's going to affect us and make a decision about years and years and years going forward. So um, I, I don't think I don't think we need to go into the details of that piece of it. And I don't know if the budget committee has actually prioritized what those things are, if those things need to be cut. Um, yeah. Did but you? that is that is where, right? I've gotten that, and I've okay. looked at looked at the, the the report, but it doesn't prioritize what those things are, okay. um, and that's 1.3 million of the proposed increase. So, um, those are the concerns that I have, and and I don't I don't know if we're going to have a budget workshop coming up to be able to talk or flesh those things out we're in more decide. detail. But if we want one Wednesday. I guess that I, I'll, I'll stop my comments at that. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Henderson, I think we need. Hey, well, I'm gonna try to keep it to a minimal if I can. Uh, but there's been several things thrown out here that I think that we've actually um, have uh, tried to address as much as four years back. Um, I know some of this came up at least three, if not four years ago, concerning. Uh, these increases and so forth um, versus the zero uh, that you're talking about and and I may be possibly uh, telling something that maybe I shouldn't be telling but but uh, I'm but I'm going to because it came up uh, at some point by two or three of us and I and I remember some folks talking about it uh, but now I don't know how far back in time it goes, 
but we're talking about cumulative amounts of money over time with our uh, staff doing as well as they do as far as keeping things under budget. Now, I'm just going to generalize a statement. Uh, my understanding it was the purpose was that some years ago we were in trouble financially and this money has been a common practice since in order to get uh, our, our financial house back in order. Now somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, maybe you can research and find out. But you know and, and, and that, that's why it was kind of backed off on when we started seeing some of this very thing right here. Um, so, but also I was wanting to mention that uh, talking about reducing the budget and so forth, we, I think we were the only ones that actually lessened or lowered the, the tax millage, gosh, in, in forever. May, maybe the first, first time, uh, you know, it was about four years ago or so. But we were the first ones to do it and even challenged the school district to, to lower their millage because we were trying to help the economy you know, come back up to the surface, at least to the surface and then maybe recover. And we were trying to lead by example. And the way we did that is, is some of these charitable, especially the charitable side of things, uh, we reduced quite a bit of that. And we also cut out a retirement fund that was no longer, we didn't feel like would be sustainable uh, for employees. And it was quite a bit of money. Um, that was un, unheard of, you know, for, for a governmental body to, to uh, go to those levels to, 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 to lessen the, the budget. And uh, there's, just, there's really a, a whole lot more that I'm wanting to mention here, but and, and, and I'd like to address the, uh, the tax increase uh, situation, which at this point right now, I, I, you know, hey, I, I'm willing to see if this thing can balance right out and, and, and hopefully not even have to consider it. Uh, and the reason why, when we talk about $12 a year on a house, as far as I'm concerned, for an elderly person, that could, that could possibly decide whether they get their medicine one time, one month out of the year. You know, $12 may not be a whole lot to us while we're working, but well, it is to folks, you get your but it is to, to, to other folks that, that, that can pay the, you know, lesser amount and get all their medicine, but they may not be able to get their medicine at least one month out of the year. So who knows? So, uh, but now talking about, uh, the hospitality tax. We, we really need to have a clear distinction about it being, it's totally different than your, your regular tax, the way it's levied. And, and, and I hope we all fully, fully understand that. Um, I understand the question about it going through uh, differently than some of the others, but the reason that was done, and, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is because there were so many uh, issues concerning the, uh, the Rock Hill CVB, the way it was done, the way it was all structured, and then we ended up having to restructure because of some of those legitimate issues and problems. And, but I, I just want to make it clear that there's only two things I believe that we can do concerning H tax. And based on what was said, I sympathize, and I even mentioned about the Chambers of Commerce myself, as far as being a part of a small visitor center in some of these. And some of you folks have heard me even mention that maybe that's something to consider throughout the county. But if, if, if you're not going to look at a, at a, very unique situation concerning where you have three main gateways to the county and getting ready to really uh, uh, increase a, a, a bigger gateway concerning Pole Branch Road and uh, New Hope Road uh, 
and then you got uh, 49 come across the Bustable Bridge, and the type of money that is generated out there under that circumstance, as far as I'm concerned, well, first of all, let me mention this before I say too much, but the, the previous CVB guy uh, that was here before and the previous county manager that was here before said that, they, that uh, uh, a visitor center, just like it was a, mo it was a model, it was modeled after, uh, I believe it was uh, Lake Norman, if I'm not mistaken, to do the same thing to be able to help with, um, you know, with visitors and, 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 and keeping it small, compact, and, and, and not some very large building on a prime piece of property somewhere. Uh, to keep it small, compact, and, and it's not a matter of if, it was when that you would need to, to uh, be able to get more money when your volunteers begin to die out and so forth. So uh, it's either there's only, there's, we only have two choices with H tax. It's either we repeal, and I emphasize repeal. or be, to figure out a, a, some way to be f fair with the money, maybe three, but, but this is what we can't keep doing if, if we're gonna criticize and, and hold these other things at bay and at hostage, then other municipalities cannot double and triple dip anymore. There's no in-between. And somebody's gonna have to have the guts to finally stop it. And I'm willing to do it. So I'm just asking you to please consider all the options on the table. I'm open to some of these other chambers. Y'all talking about picking winners and losers? Well, <laughs> I, I've been open the whole time about these other chambers. But here's somebody... We've got a proof. We got a, a, an absolute a, a proof, a model for success. Compact. It's working. Major gateways to the county. You got people that are so dedicated out there. If well, I'm just going. If you get as dedicated as these folks, this county would be on fire. Elsewhere. Because I used the same formula, the same identical formula, as far as dollar invested, two years ago. It was over $200 per $1 invested in Lake Wiley Chamber or in that visitor center. Same, same um, formula, CVB, $27 per $1 invested. All we can do is just keep giving them more, keep feeding that monster. But we're going to crush the one that's, that's extremely successful? We got it backward, folks. It's either, and again, I'm open to these other chambers. I'm, I'm, I'm open to a visitor center using it like you're supposed to use it, just like the state calls you to use it, and just like, you know, you know that we're supposed to use it, the way it's structured, because it's a whole different type of tax, period. And again, that third option is repeal if we're not going to be fair and do it right. Thank you. I don't want to address anything he said, but I do want to ask one question. Yes, sir. A minute ago, Robert had mentioned taking $150,000 that's earmarked for that study in economic development and putting it into planning. Um, I, my, I, I think that's admirable. My only concern with that is we are taking non-reoccurring dollars and sticking it into a reoccurring employee, um, and that money will quickly disappear. And uh, you know whether uh, number eleven on the new on the agenda should pass regardless, but we should not spend non-reoccurring revenues on reoccurring expenses, ever, ever, ever. In my opinion, um, I certainly don't have any problem trying to find money to help planning, but I want us to be very careful. That's one-time money, and that is 
that is big time. Um, and my only other thing is, Beth, in the years you've been here, can you recall a time? And, well, is fund balance not grown every year? Um, yeah. Every year except last year. So fund, fund balance typically grows. Um, and if we believe that departments will spend money just so they can get it again next year, I mean, I, I don't know what they'd spend it on. They haven't spent it in two oh, well. years. I mean, that, that's my, and that's my only problem. I, I, I would hope that, I would hope that our departments are, I think our departments are better than that. Um, so I, I, I'd like us to at least take a, take a look at that. Um, and because I and then, but going back 150,000, I really want to be careful. You know, non reoccurring versus reoccurring, you know, that's what you get. The legislature always loves to put non reoccurring funds into roads, and then your roads fall apart. Um, so let, let's be very careful. Well, let me wrap it up. Um, I don't really have much to add. I do appreciate the uh, uh, council members all uh, making great points, new members included, and um. Just uh, a few points. You know, the discussion about charities, nonprofits. Uh, Jim Baker started four, uh, Chad, what was it, four, five years ago? Started cutting yeah, back, trying second, to phase that out. Second year, so yeah. Trying to phase that out. So we may need to look at that again. The Riverview, uh, since I kind of enjoy construction, residential stuff a little bit. That still gets my attention a lot, uh, especially like they have a conference room added into it, do they not? They have a training facility and two day rooms, one for the EMS and one for the firefighters. I'm not sure why they can't share. But well, one, one concern I have, too, when we're having this big, nice, fancy new training center with a big conference room, can it be, yeah. you know? We, we spoke to them about that because we asked the same question. And when you have the EMS, there's some type, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going by memory, when there's some type of rule where they can't be combined uh, for the training and stuff. Ah, that but, was what they told us. But there again, I mean, I, I do wonder about using the training center mm -hmm. for those kind of needs. But uh, yes, ma'am. We'll be glad to check on that. There are times that there'll be the group training, the large right. training, and then uh, Riverview, as well as the other departments, have uh, their monthly trainings right. individually. And rather than traveling, uh, staying in their vicinity to respond to on calls. how big it is, I guess. If it's yes, humongous, sir. maybe they can just use but I, We'll you check know, on I'm that. Not, I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not condemning what's been done. I'm just points of concern, questions. Yes, um, certainly... Uh, personnel line item and I appreciate everything administration's done on the I thought because I thought it was pretty thorough but there's still legitimate questions that, mm -hmm. which we bring up every year concerning personnel additions that might need to be re-explained a little bit or re uh, looked at um, I'm getting a little concerned about this H tax stuff uh, I, I just I mean I'm just starting to feel more and more an east versus west thing we got we got to come full circle on this and think about the county as a whole, what's best for the county. Uh, personally, I don't think, I agree with Ms. Cox, I don't think we need a rec department. I think we need to be complementary with the uh, towns and cities, not compete with them. But uh, maybe that's a little bit for another day. Um, I guess the one particular thing that I mentioned before, and I'll leave it with this, just I, I got a little heartburn when I looked at and not picking on the library system, but when I looked at some, I think if I remember correctly, a 400,000 increase, if I'm thinking correctly, I, I didn't recheck that number, but for some reason that's in the back of my mind. But yet, here again, by the numbers they provided us, the, uh, the whole system wide, visitors went down about 32%, internet usage went down 20%, database. Da Database searches went down 32%. The biggest branch, Rock Hill, visitors went down 56%. So if we're having these kind of decreases, why do we um, can't matriculate while we're going up 400K? I know there was maybe 100K in there for roof work and things like that, but I would ask for that to be scrutinized very carefully yes. before our next discussion. Um, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I can't really add to everything that was so elaborately done by the rest of the council, so I guess we'll move on. 
Uh, but we got the the motion, so we, huh? somebody want to speak? There's one thing I forgot. Yes, ma'am. I, I hate to follow up, but there there were two other concerns that I did not address, and, and one of them is something that I brought up at one of the workshops, and that's the CAMA software. That's a huge expense. Yeah. I would like to know if that actually increases transparency to the public. Right. When you have a tax yeah. dispute, is that actually going to make it easier or not for you to see where your calculation is coming up? Nobody is opposed. I'm certainly not opposed to increasing technology. But it's my understanding that the CAMA, what that will do will only deal with the tax assessor's office. Um, and it will require an additional person to deal with that, at least for the next two years. And we talked about this. It, it seems like it's been chopped up. I, you know, what, whatever the next discussion is, and, and I appreciate Joel's, Joel's comments. I mm -hmm. sent him a message. I haven't had a chance to, to follow back up with him. But I think it has more to do with the substantive substantive issue about what we are doing what we want to accomplish by getting that um, that software in place because um, I just want to make sure that it is completely transparent to the public the process that we move to and that the economics of it makes sense because it seems to me that it's not creating any efficiency at all um, we're not we're not going to be able to lose any um, um, reduce any personnel from that in fact we're going to have to add on and and so you know we talked about this early on i think it was in january and i still have a very i have some heartburn with it um and, and i'll take that up individually myself but i think that that that's a big expense in this budget that i think we just need, need to be cognizant of may i interrupt you one second sure. while you're on that this kind of started back four years ago when i was dealing as a taxpayer with the system and they couldn't even find my record, and I didn't identify who I was. Very nice, very customer service friendly, but they couldn't find the information. It's on a roll of uh, mm -hmm. a three by five card or something. So I think to Christie's point, it's well made, increasing efficiencies, quick pulling up of the uh, data, consistency of tax assessment, things like that, mm -hmm. are certainly my assumption. I assume everybody else is. So. Yeah. Huh, sir? When you're done, if you okay, but uh, Ms. Cox. So. The only other piece was that I know that we got a notice that the that the city of Rock Hill is upping the water um, rate, and you know it's my understanding we we've got a line item request for increases that that we ensure that the majority of the water and sewer that we're doing is is covered by um, user fees mm -hmm. uh, because of the way our county is structured. I mean we need to make sure that we're doing that and we're keeping on top of that. I mean yes, we want to make sure that we're looking at it that way and that we're because I, as I understand it, it's going to be 120 day de notice that the city imposes this increase what are we doing to deal with that how are we m ensuring that that cost is is passed on to to the user aren't we locked into a rate aren't we locked into a <coughs> rate with the city on purchasing yeah. water from them I believe that yeah, I, I would assume well, that yeah. the rate that time is over and and they will be increasing the rates and you're right we we have to make sure that we're paying enough, not just, you know, to pay the fees, to, I mean, to pay salaries, but not just that. You know, we've got a plan for maintenance in the future and growth and, you know, changes and breakouts and, and right. you know. Because I, because I think if we want to get yes. to this east-west, and I think to the point that Britt's making, let's work together. There, there are needs that one district has that another doesn't, and one of those is water and sewer in certain districts. Um, one of those is increased inspectors because we have more growth. That's in certain areas. That's not the whole district. So, I mean, if, if we want to, you know, it's kind of like a marriage. If you want to go in here and line item and figure out what everybody's doing wrong, you can find it. Um, but is that what's best for everybody? So, I mean, I, you know, those were the two points I did want to bring up, though. The CAMA, I still have a lot of heartburn about that. Would like, you know, to get a comfort level on that and the, and the user fees with the water and sewer. Yeah, with the camera, could you have Teresa send us an email just spelling it out, how yeah. it will improve? Yeah, yeah, because it does, it does increase efficiencies and it does make the information you have a lot more technical and a lot more detailed. It does open it up for the citizens to understand why they're getting billed or why they're not getting billed. It, it, it works both ways. So, but I'll make sure I you I just want to make that. sure the comps, especially, that, 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 that information that you can extrapolate from it, that the comps and the detailed information that you would need to have to appeal it mm, yes, is specific enough that, that the public can get a hold of that. Without a doubt. And it was delayed some two years ago because they pointed out that, hey, you can't have it in effect when the new assessment 
just done comes out so you might as well just yeah. hold off and do it right now kind yeah of I, I guess that's, my, that's the time frame of it. right my, my yeah. fear is that you don't want to have a computer generate a number and spit it out and then then a constituent who says look i don't think that's correct if you look at this property that's across the street from me that's that's not appropriate it, mm -hmm. we need to we need to ensure that it is based upon something yeah. that, that they can find that they can see the comps and that makes mm -hmm. sense and part of this is part of this program as as joe brought up at the last time was that this information is hooked up to our GPS, so those those, those needs will be there. Yeah, well, one or but I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get something in writing for one you. One understanding I had when it was explained to me, it'll provide a lot more consistency of appraisals instead of just a person going out and mm -hmm. off the, the, off the hip kind of doing mm -hmm. appraisal. It'll provide a st statistical more. Well, if I'm wrong, if if I was told wrong, she needs to point that out, too. Yes. And I'll get to the two of you. Robert was... Uh, I was just going to say, I had some of the same concerns Christy does, but I, Friday I was in the assessor's office, and I went over, and Teresa showed me the file room um, and the cards and the hand-drawn sketches of every home in York mm -hmm. County. Um, and the they fact that CAMA person. will allow them to go out with an iPad or a notebook and be able to do it there... I mean, uh, I saw the efficiencies mm -hmm. firsthand when I went into the office over there and talked to Teresa. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it, it helped me feel a whole lot better about it. So if you haven't been over that way, I'd recommend a, a field trip and go mm -hmm. talk to her. So. And, and maybe in the info, she could also give some counties and how they're making it work. Mm -hmm. Spartanburg, Greenville. Yeah. We'll get it. Mr. Roddy. Yeah, I know one thing that came up when we got on the, the camel software a couple of years ago and talking about if we purchased it then, it wouldn't be online in order for this assessment because it's going to take a couple of years to get it all worked out. So if we don't get it far enough ahead of the next assessment, which is coming five more years, then we'll be put off for another five years because there's no need to get mm -hmm. it in the middle and it's not going to be ready for the next assessment. So I think that was part of the reason why she kind of gave us to go ahead to back off on it, I think, two, year, two three uh, years ago two because years we wouldn't ago. have had it in place in time to do this assessment this year. So if we don't make a move on it now, we're basically putting it off for another right. six, if, if seven If we're going to do it, we need to do you it, do it now. now. I mean, we right. can say, no, that's fine, but if we're going to do it, this is the year we got to do it. And it just pushes it basically seven more years down the road. And the total cost impact with the She yeah. can explain that too. Right. Yeah, I, I will get you all that information, ma'am. And In fact, I'll get it for everybody. Okay, we've got a long meeting. So question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, consider third reading of an ordinance to convey the annex portion of A.O. Jones Boulevard to the town of Fort Mill by quick claim deed and to provide for other matters related thereto. Move to Second. Discussion. One. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Now, what's the next one, the one that I was told it's withdrawn? So we don't need a motion on that one, Mike. Yeah, Lewis. you do. Motion to defer. Second. Okay. Um, can we have any discussion on that? Yes, sir. Just a question. I thought the last meeting this was done with um, some, uh, what am I trying to say here? Condition. Conditional. Thank you. Conditional it was, and, and I don't see any conditions on this. So. That's hence your deferral. Yeah. But okay. that, and that's the reason why they, they didn't get together just yet, but they want to. Any further discussion? Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay. Um, next item, consider second reading, case number 1506, rezone property from RC2 to AGC at intersection of Mobley Store, Perkin Roads, and the McConnell's community. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Next item, consider second reading case number 1511, rezone property from BD2 to RC1 at 32 Quayside Court in Lake Wiley Community. Uh, move to approve second reading. Second. second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Next item, rezone, uh, consider second reading case number 1512. Rezone property from RUD to RC1 at 5760 Highway 557 in the Lake Wiley community. Uh, move to approve because this is a very uh, worthy, very worthy uh, development and the density is going to be uh, where we're, the, the goal we're trying to get to. 
second. Okay. Any further discussion? Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item, case number 1513. Oh, uh, let's see where that address is. Uh, Highway 160 in the Fort Mill community. Right. Do we Move have? To approve. Okay, thank you, sir. We have a second. Second. Discussion. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Councilman Johnson, I was just wanting to find out. That, now, was this that this was something that was already approved before? They just wanted to make a change to it, like a like a. Do a and and all they're doing is adding the ability to have detached garages. They are sending me a letter stating that their CCRs will not allow them to rent those detached garages. Um, and so they, that is. Demographics. Apartments over detached garages. Yeah. Not, yeah. They're, not they're, just they're, well, they're garage. calling them. In the game office. rooms, but I but I've made sure that they can't use those as rental right. at any point. Have so. a bathroom at no so this will be this is this is this is very similar to what already is it exists in Baxter Village. So Okay. Any right. further discussion? Qu question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Next item consider a, an emergency temporary dwelling permit request six six three Lakedale Drive. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Uh, council to consider a proclamation and recognition of law enforcement officers. So, Honorable Bruce Henderson made this request. I'm going to let him read the proclamation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. It is certainly an honor to, to mention this. And uh, in, in just a major way, we really appreciate um, law enforcement and everything that they do. And we uh, I want to make it very clear, this council and I hope everyone in here considers every life important and it matters, no matter who it is. Whereas members of York County law enforcement play an essential role in safeguarding the lives, rights, and freedoms of the citizens of York County, and whereas it is important that all citizens appreciate and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their local enforcement, uh, local law enforcement, and whereas members of our law enforcement entities recognize their duty to serve the people of York County by defending life and property, by protecting against violence, destruction, and disorder, by guarding the innocent against deception, and the weak against oppression, by carrying, uh, by caring for the injured and sick and by ensuring the peace and whereas the men and women of York County law enforcement unceasingly provide a vital public service and whereas York County's law enforcement workers ensure every day, every day that the quality of life for which our citizens enjoy is maintained and now therefore be it resolved by the members of the York County Council we encourage all citizens to take, take their time to recognize and acknowledge the impact of law enforcement on our lives and encourage all citizens to commemorate law enforcement officers past and present who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered and dedicated service to their communities and in, in so doing have established for themselves an enviable an enduring reputation for preserving the rights, property, security, and lives of all our citizens. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion of support from the council for this proclamation? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Any further discussion? I'd like to make a quick yes, comment. Yes, Mr. Roddy. I noticed um, two weeks ago when Mr. Henderson said he wanted to, you know, do and recognize a proclamation for our law enforcement, in which last week, we were recognizing law enforcement in the form of a uh, um, peace officers uh, proclamation national, national, uh, two that weeks was, ago. yeah that was set forth back in 1962 by President Kennedy and, and later became um, uh, moved to, to um, I make my notes here National Police Week and flags were flown at half mass half staff and all that stuff and and I noticed in his comments he was saying how all lives matter. And I felt like this was just coming up to combat the the slogan "Black Lives Matter," and, and I don't want people to get the wrong idea why we do while this proclamation came up because you know at the same time we recognize what law enforcement does for our community. 
other communities are having such tremendous issues out of their law enforcement. So I don't want to do and, and portray anything that would maybe stepping on some of the toes in some of the communities that are going through the struggles with law enforcement. Um, and I certainly don't want anyone to get the feel, whether they're here in the audience or looking in on TV, that this is just kind of to, to, to dumb down or, or put, a, put a smothering coat over the slogan that's going around the country that black lives matter. And certainly I agree that all lives matter, but in, in some cases we've seen constant struggles out of communities who those slogans seem to be um, wrenching up and, and, and fitting some of the situations that they're going through. And I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting with um, all the police departments with, that's in York County over at the Moss Justice Center. They meet, I uh, think, once a month or, or semi-monthly um, to discuss law enforcement in York County. Mm -hmm. And I've had some discussions with them um, about some of the, the tragedies that's going around the country and trying to get ahead of what would York County do um, if, in fact, something of those magnitudes that we're seeing across the country was to happen here. And they certainly have a, a good hold on how they would handle the situation so that we don't see some of the rioting and the looting and, and some of the atrocious things that we're seeing across the country. Uh, but certainly, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea about this proclamation because I, I agree that all lives matter, but in, in I do have to sit up here and be cognizant and mindful of some of the situations that's going on nationally um, in some of the communities that's not as fortunate as we are to have such outstanding law enforcement or people who are cognizant of what's going on nationally. So we can't we can't forget about those communities that's been been devastated by by tragedy. But at the same time, uh, hopefully those instances avoid York County. But if if in fact it ever does uh, happen, I, I think. I have full confidence in our law enforcement that we will handle it in a way that's that's pleasing to our community, uh, pleasing to uh, other law enforcement as well. So I, I did want to kind of make that point. Um, the the proclamation was was well written. It, it didn't um, it didn't go out of its way to try to make any kind of point. So I definitely um, support Mr. Henderson on this proclamation. You know, I think you you both made good points. I think that fact that it shows how fortunate we are to be in York County that. Uh, um, it's a situation where Mr. Uh, Henderson, and I agree with him, I just wanted to reiterate the local recognition of our great, as you said, great law enforcement. And I just Mr. want to say, Walton. not getting into the which lives matter or whatever, you know, but I just think we can, we did have peace officers week nationally, you know, but I think we need to recognize our law enforcement and our firefighters and everyone else more than once a year. I think we, need, we can never tell them often enough. So I'll support the proclamation because of what it says to support and thank our law enforcement and our firefighters and our public safety people. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, sir. I'd, I'd just like to add to this because I can't say, say enough about what these, these, these women and men do uh, in, in, in the name of protecting us. And, and like you're talking about, I mean, from firefighters, first responders, uh, paramedics, whoever is a public servant, that is out there to protect us and willing to, you know, risk their own lives to, to do so. My whole purpose, maybe maybe this was a little, uh, 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 you know, I don't know you want to call it redundant or whatever, but I'm just going to tell you this. We cannot acknowledge them enough. Folks, what we're about to do, if, if we do not allow them um, – and, and I'm not meaning anything by this. I, I'm just simply stating a fact. If we have them in fear that they are going to uh, lose everything they've got just because they enforce the law or just because cause, cause law enforcement, they're human beings. They're going to goof up from time to time. And, and uh, but, but, but criminals mostly no matter who it is, they goof up on purpose. So, you know, we, we can't have them being in fear and, and lose out on good quality people that are willing to go into law enforcement. And that, that's my whole purpose. Is I'm, I'm trying to make it very clear just right here at a local standpoint and, and at a local level, but I'd love to shout it with a bullhorn up in Washington, this same proclamation, 
and state the fact that, you know, we don't, we don't want you to be afraid to be a policeman. We don't want you to be afraid to be a deputy or private investigator or, or in some way just affiliated with law enforcement, whether you, you're a solicitor or, or whatever, for fear of having things turned on you to where we won't have anybody after a while. It'll be total chaos. So I feel like I don't mind uh, um, putting some extra icing on the cake here. I think they deserve it. And anyone that is a public servant at this point now, I think it's okay to, to uh, really, really stack it good and high for, uh, as far as the appreciation, appreciation is concerned. Well, it's certainly a time to stand up for our law enforcement people. But that being said, question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item, consider authorizing staff to apply for and accept, if awarded, a grade for landfills grant funding in the amount of 25% of the purchase price, approximately 150 k to replace the aging diesel equipment. Move to approve. Second. Dis discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Consider authorizing staff to apply for and accept, if awarded, for fiscal year 2016 solid waste grants for a total of $30,250 with no matching funds. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Consider approval of a utility relocation agreement in the amount of $847,4.16 for the relocation of City of Rock Hill electrical utility lines, poles, and associated equipment in order to construct the Pennies 2 project to widen and pave McConnell's Highway from east of Falls Road to Heckle Boulevard. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Consider approval of allocating an additional $866,475 to the South Carolina Highway 160 Gold Hill Road Intersection Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Grant Project to cover for the latest estimated budget developed by the South Carolina DOT after the bidding process. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item. Council to consider acceptance of the following roadways into the county maintenance system. 1,678 feet of the Cat Octon Road, 1,247 feet of the Pisk Cattleway Court, and 521 feet of the Deerfield Drive. Move to approve. Second. Second. Discu discussion. I had asked yes, about sir. Mr. the Johnson. Deerfield Drive section just because it sits where the Fort Mill School District has their bus terminal. Mm -hmm. And that road is acceptable for us. I mean, it's, it's I guess, to standard, and we're not concerned about that. I mean, there's a couple of hundred, hundred buses every day driving over that road. It it's, meets our specifications, yes, sir. So be it. Any further discussion? Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Next item. Council to consider award of bid number 2286 for the furnishing of unitized. Unitized. Thank you, sir. Mills for the 2015 summer feeding program to MG Foods Incorporated of Charlotte in the amount of $328,015. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Next item. Council to consider award of proposal number 2280 regarding food services for the detention center in prison to Trinity Services Group of Old Smar, Florida in the amount of $1.17 per meal. Move to approve. <coughs> Second. Discussion. Uh, yes, sir. I just want to point out that it's actually one dollar point one six nine. I in case they try to try had to no to doubt Mr. Williams would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Next item. Council to consider approval to award bid number 2273 regarding the processing and hauling of wood and yard waste debris at the county landfill to the second lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Moorhead Brothers Incorporated of Blacksburg, South Carolina, in the amount of $17.95 per ton. Move to approve for discussion. Second. Discussion. I see Mr. Ms. Roddy. I see Ms. Tierra had impeccable timing when she walked in, because I did have a, a couple of questions um, 
about this? One, they never would respond back. So I guess they were yeah. responsive, yeah. but not responsive. They, they didn't, well, they didn't <laughs> respond back yeah. when they tried to get them. They didn't mean the first <laughs> yeah. response. They were out of state, that, too. Um, they haven't responded back, but what's, what is it customary to just go ahead and give it to the second lowest bidder, even if the percentage is somewhere close to 25% higher? Can we not yes, rebid that? Yes, sir. The norm is to go with the second lowest bidder. We have an option to rebid, but historically, we go with the second lowest bidder. Could we not? I mean, because that's an additional twelve thousand dollars more on this on this particular project. And are we up against the clock on having this debris moved? Per, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, per uh, DHEC standards. Okay. That was yes, okay. Sir. That that that's eliminate putting it off because I don't want get too close to any kind of deadline where we may be facing some kind of penalties or anything. Yes, sir. That's the only question I had. Yeah, normally, with the same time frame, you end up recycling what you already got anyway, don't you, on the norm? Is that right, David? Now, now with this particular bidder yeah. that received the contract and didn't perform the work, is he going to face some kind of restrictions on participating in the bid? What kind of, I guess, if you want to call it clawbacks or whatever, so can he turn around and bid again in another Two, month, two weeks and secure a bid if we had something else he wanted to bid on? Well, it would certainly be taken under consideration. Right. Yes, sir. I, I mean, I, I would hate to see a situation where we're getting in, you know, people getting bids and don't even do the projects, and then here we are maybe facing some type of deadline and possibly get a fine from whether it's DHEC or any other outfit that we, we're having to <coughs> adhere to. So. With it being landfill, I kind of look towards you. I mean, in terms of what I mentioned, would it in such a short time frame, per Mr. Roddy's suggestion, would it in times past, would you end up pretty much getting a recycling of what you got before, or would it be worthy of that if the time oh. allowed? No. I mean, they've been the same bid prices. I thought you, you were confused me with recycling at the recycling center. I'm sorry. Now, now recycling the recycling right. center yeah. bid. Yeah. 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 Chances are, if you I don't know what the third lowest price was on the that. third lowest uh, bid was 39.52. 39.52. So they know what the next bid is. So you, you pretty much know they're going to raise their price. Okay. So. All righty. Any further? Thank you, ma'am. Any further questions? Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Next item uh, request council to authorize, excuse me designating the proceeds from the sale of Knight Stadium in the amount of $833,542 be used for economic development, product de development. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Um, yes, sir. Just one in my committee. We also um, recommended this, but we also asked um, Mr. Swenson and Mr. Shanahan to work on ideas to continue to fund this project, not just to do a one-time thing, but to look at how other counties fund their economic development and, and to give us some, some ideas on what we can do for that. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're definitely I, looking. I initially had some, some concerns about just moving, you know, setting aside those sale proceeds over, but then when I called call my representative um, to get some more information on it, uh, he assured me that this is not just turning over this money to economic development just to have a, a, a free Slow hand on a check checkbook, all those expend major expenditures will have to come back to council before uh, they're authorized to spend it. So that kind of made me feel a little better about, you know, setting aside a, a nice sum of money, knowing that it still has to come back to us for approval. We're just kind of designating these funds. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about uh, how we continue to develop a pipeline to continue to get the money over there into this um, um, development fund. But certainly, um, knowing that it has to come back to us for approval, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to, to support it that way. But still, the how we get additional funds over there the next two, three, four, five, ten, twenty years, that that's something that we're gonna have to really take yeah. a take a look at to make sure we're doing it right. Yeah, we'll be evaluating just about whatever the state does and whatever the different counties within the state does, and, and uh, we will find what's best for the. Uh, your county and we'll bring it to you for approval. David, do you want to make any other comment about this? I, I think we're on the right path. Do we do this? Um, 
One of, the, one of the things to recognize as I came into this job, the York County is very progressive when it comes to product development. And it's put up at a high pedestal based on the strategic plan that you all have developed and mm -hmm. we're working through as we go through uh, many different activities in economic development. The product development is key to the future. And how we do that with your leadership and specifically looking at the different ways we address product development. It, in the recent past and current situation, we've been looking at speculative buildings. Um, we have two under, under construct, or will soon to be under construction. Um, City of Rock Hill's been doing speculative buildings. That is a product that needs to come to the market. There is a time and a place for that. There's also a time and a place maybe for securing property or land for future economic development potentials. So taking and addressing this need for a product development fund is, a, is that first step. How we put monies into it for the future is, is what we're evaluating. And know what some of our competitors do and, and realize that it is a competitive market. It is also a, a market in which in your county itself, we might have a, a way, once we have funds in there, we can leverage and partner with communities, with possibly the private sector as well. So there's some upside big time potential here. Mm. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Appreciate it, sir. There's no further discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Do we have a motion? No. We have a motion on consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Discussion. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Committee reports. I don't guess there are any committee reports, are they not? Do you have we met tonight. Okay. The uh, Finance Operations Committee met tonight. We approved Laurie Helms and David Roberts for the Rock Hill York County CVB. We, we approved Craig Lentz for York County Cultural Culture and Heritage. We approved Clive Buchanan, Glenn Reynolds, Michael Knight, and Randy McCurry for Flint Hill Fire Tax Board. We approved Brenda Artemis, Daniel Simmers, Thomas Muller, Karen Nichols for Catawba Mental Health. We recommended Trina Perry for Council on Aging, Joshua Backus, April Hershey, and Thomas Nodratowski for Keep York County Beautiful. And Mike Lynn for Fire Prevention Board of Appeals, which by the way, we also had a nice discussion about this, that we'd like to see this board rolled in to the other uh, appeals board, board building appeals. the Board of Building Appeals, this board has, hasn't met in 10 plus years. There's really no reason for them to exist other than we are required by statute to have this board. Um, it would make more sense to roll this board into a much larger board. And if they were needed, um, certainly someone from uh, uh, one of the fire departments could come and give them advice. Um, but nonetheless, we did appoint Michael in because someone has to serve on this board until we can do that. You want to go ahead and get that on future agenda? I would love to see something along that lines if it's feasible. And I know Michael, was, they, they said that Michael was going to look and see if, how feasible that was. And since we're in the middle of budget, we don't have to do it. If we ain't met in 10 years, we can probably wait till right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, Building Board of Appeals, we uh, approved Thomas Palmer and Darius Alexander, Catawba Regional Workforce Investment Board. It was Kathy Holine, and that was our meeting. Thank you. Any, yes, ma'am. I, I just have one question, and I don't know. I, I had a call from a constituent about one of the appointees. Do we have a standard requirement that says that folks who are on the boards can't belong to an entity or um, that is seeking to get funds from the board or that may financially benefit from being on that board um, if we don't I think we should and I guess it, it, just more in general terms and I I think I've looked up the ordinance before I, I didn't see anything specifically that addressed this I would like to get a handle on uh, conflicts of interest we're actually working on that and we'll present something in council very soon and, and for these appointees has that been looked at at all we <coughs> 
we are, I know, I know the ordinance Michael's talking about, we're, we're looking to pass an ordinance which would require you to declare that you have a conflict, at which point we would stop it at our level. It's kind of like what we have to declare when we do our election so uh, we're filings. Just we have to say, look, here it is. And then we, at our level, if we didn't think that conflict was great enough, we might let them through. But if we thought it was, we, we could stop it at our level. So our, I guess just fundamentally, there's no, there's no prohibition. It's, it's going to be a, 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 a basically, if you decide to recuse or disclose, there's no, there's no function for us to oversee that when we're fo putting folks on boards. I mean, I think we're we not going to We could stop folks. it. I mean, I think the goal would be for us to stop it at our level, not to let you on a board if we think you you have a conflict. But you have to do. We need a, we need an ordinance to let make them disclose it to us before we can even start that process. And as far as that goes, I mean, it's not always just a cut and dry type situation. It could be where just occasionally something can come up like that, where somebody just has to recuse themselves. I, I mean, I don't see where that would stand all the time in some cases some kind of, but in some cases be, be, it would have to be a case by case i mean am, am i right in saying so um you'd have to the ethics act requires you to recuse yourself from any vote where you would have a financial benefit from the outcome of the vote right does that that, that extends to employers to employers if you work for an entity that stands to financially benefit, not you personally, but if you work for an entity. That, that's right, that sort of disclosure is what we want to um, have okay. addressed in the ordinance. Okay, then next item is council member new non-agenda comments. Any councilman have anything to discuss? Yes, sir, yeah. Mr. Roddy. Uh, I, I guess this may just follow up with some of the discussion we just had. You know, I was just thinking, we've had people come before us and complain about um, developers being on our planning commission is is that could that be viewed as a conflict of interest since we I mean just to go back to touch on no I don't I mean you want if you want an opinion on neurosurgery I'd rather have it from a neurosurgeon so the same for building I wouldn't because because and the reason what made me think of it we this body's been kind of criticized a little bit for for having developers over there approving some of the reg regulations and some of the developments. And I, I know we've had several people come up here and and criticize, up, criticize us of that makeup of that board. Um, and it, it could possibly be viewed as someone serving on that particular board would benefit from those decisions that that planning commission kind of makes. It, it just, I just had a quick, quick thought when we were discussing that, so. Mr. Chairman, could I, could I say something to that? Mm, yeah, we're not supposed to have an open yeah. discussion well, about it, but just... Well, I, I was just going to say that it, I guess as long as you don't stack it with all seven or nine or whatever, how many, you know. Yeah, and they have to... I mean, you got to have different points of view. it does affect them in any way. Anyway, any other councilman concerns, discussion? Okay, I'll just bring up, uh, do we want to have a budget workshop Wednesday night? We've got a meeting tomorrow night. I can't make it Wednesday, so. Okay, that's a no from Bump. Put me down so, a uh, Whether we want to or whether we need one, I think, is the question that I was asked. There's a whole well, lot of questions kind of, asked tonight I, yeah, I that, think that, so. that need to be answered uh, probably before third reason or, or, or could very well be talked about in a workshop, but I don't know if that gives staff two days enough to prepare for that workshop or if we need to uh, uh, possibly look at it different. But, I mean, certainly... We, we, I don't want to meet just to meet by any stretch of the imagination, but if we can get uh, some of these issues talked about and hashed out, that might be productive. Well, if you think we need to meet to discuss, or if the administration and Beth, I guess that's why I kind of defer to staff kind of to see. Well, one, kind of address it staff it want to see if two days gives them enough time. Actually, it's probably, yeah, probably more like one day, but. You know, we have a, You mean for Wednesday night? So does the councilman and lady want to meet Wednesday night? Yes or no? We got one. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 most of my questions have been answered. So I'm, I mean, I'll come if, if, if folks want their okay, questions. Let me answered. put it another way. Anybody else has a tremendous urge to meet Wednesday night? I don't have a tremendous urge to meet. I, <laughs> I certainly would like answer. Yes, 
to have some conversation. I mean, what I was trying to do was spur debate on some yeah. basic issues that, that, we, that we have here. Um, certainly, we need to have that debate. Now, if that debate needs to happen Wednesday night, or if you want to have that debate on the third reading, right. I'm, I'm, I'm good with coming in here on third reading as long as staff has supplied us those answers prior to that. Right. I don't need to sit around on a Wednesday night, you know, mm -hmm. to, 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 to have that debate. That, that was, that was going to be my next suggestion, that possibly we could put together a report, hopefully by, by the end of the week, take our time, make sure it's right, well. get it to you all, give you the time we need to review it. I mean, you heard exactly the points every council member made, correct? Yeah. So you'll address all the points? Between, uh, between everyone that they can us, we got to... Every point will be addressed? So will that if we could have that done before I mean if we can get a response back before noon before like when on Monday yeah, it, it'd be nice to have it sooner so that I could have some time to digest it so you're so saying the sooner the better is the, the I'm, week not, before, I'm not moving to meet the week before that's June perfect. first meeting. that's perfect yeah. for me so the first of that week so we have a week to kind of look it over feedback to staff yeah, and I mean you can always talk to Beth or staff members bill and just bring forth your points and then we can have no surprises the night of the third reading. Let's air it out with them, and then you can bring forth how you feel about it. But get with them to get all your questions answered, and then you can say if you're happy or not, and how you feel about it. And third, uh, third reading is actually scheduled for June 15th. Oh, okay. Well, then we have a meeting where we can have. Yeah. Because we have a public. We have a public hearing on the 27th. Right. Yeah. 27th of. Uh, May, next May, week. Yeah, next Wednesday. Yeah. Now, and there doesn't, there's nothing about the public hearing that, that prohibits us from talking about some of these questions at that time, is there not? Yeah, because we, I mean, the last couple of years, uh, we've had plenty of time. Well, and you, you just right. said the right. third reading's the second meeting, right. so we can have this on the agenda for discussion. Right. Yeah. On Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Um, no further points? Do we have a motion on uh, executive session? Move we go into executive session to receive legal advice and discuss proposed contractual matters. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, we'll be back here at the latest start at 15 to 9. Maybe a few minutes before that. Oh. Latest. The door's closed. There's no uh, action items coming out of executive session. If there's no further council discussion, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>